All right, we got lift off once again. Welcome to the Big Truth Podcast, uh, episode ten. Your episode ten, I think. Is it ten? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, 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 yeah, because Packer was nine. I'm here with my boy Joe Hawk. Uh, you might know him from uh, Battle Ruins or Hammer and the Nails or the Lovely Lads or a whole uh, host of uh, New Bedford area bands uh, and Dartmouth area bands yeah. <laughs> um, and, and whatnot. But you know the the funny thing is. Uh, listening to the intro there, uh, I didn't want to get sued for samples. Yeah. So that's actually Trevor, like saying like the batting down the hatches and all oh, that stuff. It? Yeah, yeah. In, in the Big Truth podcast, he, nice. he, he, yeah, um, we we uh, recorded it at his uh, his uh, his the Coliseum. The, uh, the man's a genius. Yeah, he's he's fucking awesome. And uh, and uh, I was like, fuck, I, w- I wish we had like a pirate saying batting down. And I was like, actually, dude, just say it. That yeah. way we don't get. And then he, then he's putting like ocean sounds yeah. and, and storm sounds and shit. I, you can't really hear it, but it's it's in there. And, you know, if you really tore it apart, it sounds like a sample. That dude's been making my band sound fucking good for years so I, okay. yeah like literally if you're a band and you're anywhere near southeastern massachusetts and you're a punk rock or a hardcore noi band you should really hit him up yeah i mean i don't know if he wants to work so oh. I'm, I'm if you can find him and uh he's like the a team if, if just, you can find him and uh you know and, and if you can afford it just just go look on brian simmons farm he's yeah probably it, cleaning up goat shit or something yeah, yeah. And, and that's the other thing is like you know he's got a pretty cool life man because outside of uh Playing in bands and recording stuff, he literally works on a on farm. An organic, I think it's an organic farm, right? I'm not sure if it's, I, I, I can't speak to the, I can't certify it as organic or not. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. But I don't have those credentials either. Yeah. I, it, it's, it's a great farm though. They yeah. have uh, like a, a baby goat thing every like couple of months, whenever goats have spawn. Whatever, spawn. Yeah. And uh, I brought the kid down there a few times and uh, she's terrified of fucking goats and I, I, I don't know. So, so you brought your kid to, to for the laughs? Yeah, I like to terif- terrify my kid. You know, it, I think it'll tougher toughen her up for the future. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, and that's the thing is like then our other friend who own, who's an old hardcore dude that has a hardcore label owns a farm and runs a farm and that's that's a good line of business I think to be in. I don't know if it's yeah. a good lucrative line of business, but I feel like that's a. A, a, a very uh, noble or wholesome or whatever kind of word for it. Line fulfilling. Of fulfilling. Fulfilling. That's, that's, that's that is the word. It, yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, they do farmer's markets and stuff like that. My wife's picked up goat cheese and random, random products from them before and yeah. like, everything's tasty. So. And that's the so thing nice. is, that, you know, you should buy, you should be buying local as much as you can. Yeah. Um, and I, they do uh, goat yoga there as well. I've yogurt. Heard. Yoga. Yoga. What is, I believe, what does that entail? I think you do yoga and goat stand on you or some shit. What we should really do is set up a uh, a, a a day where all uh, uh, hardcore uh, men, yeah, <laughs> because we, everyone's the hardcore kids, hardcore guys that are over thirty or thirty five or whatever, yeah. uh, do goat yoga, and we we just do a a, 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 vid- a video I'm, shoot for that. Uh, we'll, we'll, I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I, I tried getting into yoga like. Dude, years ago. I mean, I'll, I'll do some stretches and stuff like that before lifting weights. But I bought like a, a DVD, like like from like Walmart, like beginners yoga. Yeah. And like I, I had thrown it down and like my I put in the the player. I was kind of trying to. I think it was like downward dog. It was like the most basic fucking thing ever. Yeah. And like my wife came down and she just starts laughing. She's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And I was like, "Fuck this!" I was like, "Like I, it was painful just to be like kneeling down." Sure. And I was like, "I'm like, I'm done." Uh, well, I do have a uh, a yoga thing that will probably make you laugh. I don't know if it will or not. Yeah. But well, there's two things. You know, on um Diamond Dallas Page, the old wrestler, has a whole yeah, yoga yeah, thing yeah, that's yeah, for yeah. like more towards dudes, I guess. That yeah. are, and I guess it the older I get, it does seem like it makes sense that it would probably be a good and beneficial thing to do. But oh, yeah. it's just the self consciousness of it is like, yeah, I don't know if I want to be I, doing I that. I mean, I like uh planks considered yoga, is that I, I guess I, I, I do some planks every now and then. Like I can hold like a, a minute plank. I, I, do you, do you say namaste or whatever it is after it? Namaste. I mean, namaste. No, yeah, no. no. Then, it's just, then it's not yoga. No. All right. Okay. Like <laughs> usually, usually I'm like holding a plank while I'm like you know like looking on looking at asses on Instagram or <laughs> something like that. You know. Like, yeah. Or, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's it's definitely not spiritual. Whatever I fucking do. 
Yeah. So when when I was in uh, when I was in undergrad in college, I went to a um, Salem State College. Yeah. So I lived in Salem before it was cool to live in Salem. Yeah. Like I'll just say, I, I broke the ground for 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 for, for the first hardcore dude yeah. to, to live in Salem before everyone moved up there. Yeah. I, I'm just kidding, but uh, no, no, yeah, no, you know what I'm. Yeah, talking. I know what you're saying. But uh, I I uh, I I went there. It was like 90 to 94, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, it was uh it was like one of the only colleges that still required you to have gyms. Okay. So it was like you needed to have two credits a gym and each gym was a half credit. Okay. And so I needed one. And uh, the only thing that would fit in my schedule was yoga. So I took it and uh, there was other people I knew that I worked with and stuff in the class. So it was, you know, whatever. Um, and uh, I don't doubt to that to this day, I'm still too immature for some of the aspects of yoga. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, you know, one thing you're doing these stupid, not stupid, but you're doing these kind of ridiculous, like poses that you would never do in daily life. And then you look over at your friend and then he's doing the same thing yeah. and then you start laughing and fall out of it or whatever. But no one tells you the amount of accidental flatulence that happens in yoga because oh, okay. you're moving shit around yeah. or whatever. And so people are ripping them and I'm still too immature. Like every time yeah. someone rips one, like I'm like shoulders shaking, like red, you know, red in the face hey. and, and, and you know, all that stuff. I, I'm assuming though that like once you got start going, like if you joined like a hot yoga studio or something like that and like you're like religiously going like once or twice a week, like probably with the same people in the same classes, like sooner or later, like it's almost like you've like had like wartime experiences yeah. where it's like that hot girl that's next to you that like rips one or something like that. Like it doesn't even phase you anymore. It's like, you just put your hand like down into like your, your, your buddy's stomach who just yeah, got like yeah, blew yeah, up yeah. by some track. Like, you're like, oh, it's just another day at the office. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, it doesn't even phase you anymore. You know, like you probably like, you're like, all right, like Monday, Monday I'm going to yoga. So Sunday, like, I'm not going to eat heavy. Like, I'm yeah, just going to yeah. have, like, a salad. I might like, skip the Friolis on Sunday. Yeah, like, you know, like, all right, just, I, I'm just eating light, you know, just water in the morning, like, no espresso, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like, because things are going to be coming out Monday yeah. morning, you know. You got to like, really plan for it. But, so, anyway, so yeah. the thing was about it, that that was one thing, and then there was one thing where there was this dude in the class, and um, he had, he was, they had him, the teacher was, like, Using them as an example. Yeah. Right. So it was like the whole class. Is, the whole like, a, class. like a positive example? or like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, all right, let me demonstrate something. So yeah. she like had him come out. And it was like weird because it was like one of those dudes. He was like a 35, 40-year-old dude at the time. Like, yeah. But it was in a college thing. So yeah. we were all like in our uh, late teens, early 20s. Yeah. And um, just, you know, dude that went to school later or whatever. And, and um and, and and probably is like our age now and just really needed the yoga to like stretch out and <laughs> yeah. shit like, you know, fucking poor motherfucker, dude. And so anyway, you know, he's laying there and she wanted him to bring his legs back behind his head type of thing. Yeah. And he did one of those. It was like the most comedic fucking fight ever, dude. <laughs> because it like the second he lifted his leg like a, a centimeter oh, above the ground, it started and it went the whole way of his leg. It legs. sounded like, like so a paper was, bag ripping slowly. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. <laughs> and it like went the whole way yeah. of like the whole motion of his legs coming yeah. up. So it was like. I, I mean, and dude, literally I had to leave. Because yeah. I literally was yeah. like an inch from like pissing my pants and I felt like I was being so disrespectful, but I didn't mean it, but like, I'm just too immature. Like, yeah. and like, dude, I could not fucking contain it. I was like tearing up and welling up <laughs> and like fucking whatever. And I didn't want to become more of a spectacle than it, than it was. But like, it was just like, cause like the look of horror on his face as it happened. So hold on. But was, he committed was, to the was bit. He, was he like putting his legs up or was like the teacher like pushing his legs? Like <laughs> No, she was like, lift your legs up. And then she was going <laughs> to... So right. he started, lifted his legs, and then she grabbed it. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like the second he lifted up, and then I, I got a vivid flashback <laughs> of it. So it was like, and then like like a second into it, she grabbed his legs and pushed it back. So it was like too late. Yeah. And it was already coming. Like there was no stopping that train at that point. But the so the thing is, is like, so it was like, <laughs> yeah. and then I was like, and then, you know, I was like done. Like, so I had to leave, like to compose myself. Yeah. And then I just didn't even go back well, that you, day. You know, something like, I, I got to think that like. But I would do the same thing to this day. I fucking absolutely yeah, yeah, know. Yeah. It. But I mean, I got to think like, say if you're, if you're like a gun ho, like yogi, yoga, yeah. yogurist, whatever you want to fucking call yourself. You're probably like, used to it. Yeah. You're probably used to it. But I mean, also there's like. It's just battle sound. Like, like I know if you, if you're like. You know if you ate something that you fucking shouldn't have, like, yeah. you know, like, and you're like, you're like, oh, yeah, like, you shouldn't I, be volunteering. I, I'm, I'm for real, shit. I'm real fucking gassy today. Like, yeah. maybe I should go drop one before I take this fucking yoga class. Like, I, like, there's, there's some, 
the, the yeah. Hans are honking. There's yeah, traffic yeah, yeah, coming yeah. out. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I should like clean the highway, you know? Like, yeah. so I don't think he was <laughs> expecting it from the look of horror on his face, which made it that much more funny. Yeah. Because and then he was instantly bright red, but it was like already, it was still like in motion. It's like, you, you know, time slowed. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? Time <laughs> slowed down and it was like, how long, did he, so motion. How long did he hold and, that pose for? Oh, I don't know. Cause I was out <laughs> oh, of there. Dude. I was, I, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't even stay around. But the other thing that would make me laugh is at the end for like the last 10 minutes of class, I had everyone like kind of lay down and they yeah. dim the lights and you know, you had to kind of, uh, just to, to kind of relax and yeah. then people would fall out and start snoring. And I was like, and I couldn't take that either. I don't know why, but yeah, it was like it, hysterical to me. And then you, you know, I know. And then like, I would look at my friend and it, I know he was looking at me and you could see my shoulders going, you yeah. know, that whole, you know, trying to hold it in and all yeah. that, but whatever. I, I mean, like, I think it's something that I could definitely get into if I had more time. Like I could yeah. definitely like that, like that hot yoga shit kind of sounds kind of interesting to me like real oh, absolutely like i don't know how hot the room is 100 degrees plus maybe i don't know I don't, I don't, yeah i know nothing I, about it like i know like probably like once every six months like i'll go get like a deep tissue sports massage or something like that yeah and like i always tried like it's pretty much whatever i can find on like a group on you know it's like sure. oh there's a deal here like fucking you know 50 bucks for an hour okay let's go with that place and whenever i go to a new place like the girl that's always working on me or the woman that's always working she's like shocked at like how damaged like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so I'll go and I'll just be like, I'll be like, yeah, like mostly my back, like lower back, like legs. And the last one I went to was like maybe like two, three months ago. And uh, it was a place like not far from my house. And like, she like, she got in and she started working and she's like, she's like, you know, she did the best, but like halfway through the, the, the massage, she's like, you know, like I'll finish up what I can, but like your back is just like one giant knot. Yeah. And I'm like, I was like, I was like, does that mean like I'm like one of your most like jacked up like customers? And she's like, well, no, like we got like this like paraplegic, this guy in a wheelchair that like he's his upper back and his arms are like really messed up. But I mean, all all he is just like he's just wheeling himself around and he's just like all upper body just like working out like constantly. So I'm like, I'm like, wow, my upper back is that fucked up. And she's like, yeah, she's like, you know, like we have a girl here who's like a little bit stronger than me. Like we, next time you come in, like, you know, maybe you can just, <laughs> you know, she was like tossing my business away and I'm, yeah, like, I'm yeah. like, Jesus. I'm like, well, so but, it something so, like, but it sounds like it was like, it was coming from a good place because she knew her limitations. Yo, she no, knew she no, wasn't no. going to be able I, to like, help you. Yeah. She was like, you know, like she, 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 she knew what she was doing. And like, I did feel like better the next day, yeah. but I mean like, dude, I've gone to another place. It was like, it was probably one of the first places that I went like, uh, and, uh, it was local also. And uh, like, and this was like a bigger gal. So like, if, if I go to someplace, like I want, I want a woman with like fucking meat hooks on her hands. Like yeah, she's yeah. really going to like, I want, I want to, I want to be sore when I leave there. So she put me down on like table. She got like the towel, like over my ass and everything like that. And she's got like, it's like this ceramic seashell. That's like got like lotion or something like that. And she's like working like my back. She's like starting to work my, my lats. And she like hit like a fucking, she, she hit a trigger or something like that and like my leg like spasmed and like kicked out from the bed oh. like fr from like the the table and just like totally like sent that like ceramic seashell filled with like oil like <laughs> against the wall like oh, shattering no, it yeah. she's like freaking out she's like she's like oh my god like are you okay and i'm like yeah i think so like what did you what did you hit and she's like she's like i don't know you're just like all tense and like all knots and like yeah, yeah. i was like i'm sorry like you know like <laughs> I, I don't know like but i mean like i'm thinking like because i have those issues like Probably that hot yoga or like yeah. put like hot stones during massages or something like sure probably be beneficial to me. I think yeah, you should probably think about like a sauna or like a hot tub for your house. Uh, dude, that house has got enough fucking problems. <laughs> like I can't afford uh, a hot tub. <laughs> I, I, I do do uh, I do do like float tanks every once in a while. Too. Do you? Where do, where do you find those? Uh, there's one in Somerville that's pretty good that I've done before. Uh, there's one in Lakeville off of 44. Oh, there's good. one in Lakeville. Oh, yeah, shit. it's uh, it's it's. I think it's like at some sort of like MMA gym or something like that. That it's a, it's an older tank, but it was cheap. There's one in Warwick that I've gone to, huh. and there's one in Newton. And the one in Newton, I actually just went with my wife not that long ago, and they actually have like the cryo freeze chambers also. I heard that's awesome. I've never done it before, but it's like I know like they had said they had some sort of deal on like a Thursdays where it was like real bare bones cheap. Like it was like the place is called like uh uh freeze and float or fruit and fleet like something i don't know whatever but like like a, like a bunch of people go there thinking it's an ice cream place in the maybe, summer I don't know. It, it's not far from Cabot, so you know you yeah. go right down the street but uh but yeah that that's fucking great man like yeah. that like and like that's like reasonably like usually most of those places since they're all in competition like those like float places they're like uh 
you know, for like an hour, it'll run you like 75 bucks. So, I mean, if you were to go get like a massage, like a massage is usually going to cost you like about 70, 75 bucks, like for like an hour or so. But this, the float is like the deprivation tank, right? Yeah, yeah. It's awesome, man. So, like, so you do mushrooms and go? I haven't yet because like, it, you know, I, I, I thought about it because I was like, I, I asked the place in Somerville, not that I was going to be like, hey, I want to do mushrooms in your fucking, in your float tank. <laughs> What's your psychedelic policy? <laughs> yeah. And well, they had like, they had like something where like, you know, they're like, yeah, like on like the, the waiver that you signed, like you're not allowed to be under like influence. <laughs> Of anything, but like I asked, her, I was like, I was like, so how long can I go into this float tank? She's like, well, you can go as long as you want, like you know, like you just have to set the appointment. And I'm like, four you? hours. They were like, they were like, well, you can do three hours for like whatever the price was, yeah, maybe yeah. like two hundred bucks. And I was like, I can, mm. do, I can do a white dose of mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. So like I, you know, you I, might not want to do the hero's journey, but you could do oh, the light dude, dose. I've been there plenty of times, man. <laughs> like, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know, like uh. Maybe like a light dose, man. Like you know something. The thing is, just I'm I'm so overtired that the second that I go in there, I, I just fucking fall asleep. Yeah, anyhow, that's you know? what I. And then like it, it's it's great. It's comfortable. It's comfortable. Like it'll be like that lucid dreaming sleep. Yeah. And then like you know eventually like you're gonna bump into like the wall. And yeah. when you bump into the wall, you freak it, out. Yeah, you get like rocketed back into reality. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, dude, I, I'm I'm at that stage in life where I'm so like burnt out and tired that like I can't even go to a movie. If I go to a movie, no. if, if I'm in somewhere where it's like climate controlled and doc, I'm out like a motherfucker, dude. dude. Like three seconds in, I get it. I get home from work. And uh, I get home from work and like I chase the kid around, you know, like, like relieve my wife from like chasing the kid around. Either I'll make dinner, she makes dinner, whatever. And the second that that dinner hits my stomach, dude, I sit down on the couch and it's like, oh, we're going to have family time. We're going to watch. I know lately it's been fucking Tiger King or whatever, or King Tiger, whatever the yeah, fucking yeah, show yeah. is. And it's like, dude, I'm just out. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm fucking out. You know, yeah. it's like, you can't even get through your collection of horror movies anymore. Dude, I bought, I bought probably like when all this like coronavirus stuff happened, I was like, I don't fucking know if I'm going to be working. Like, let me just support some friends like who have like small companies. I'm going to buy a bunch of bootlegs. I'm going to buy a bunch of Blu-rays. Dude, like I, it took me like four hours to watch like some <laughs> Santo vampire fucking movie today. And like, and it's like in subtitled. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, of course, yeah. and it's like, you know, I'm like squinting cause the subtitles are shitty. I'm like nodding off. Like, and it's like most of those movies, you don't even need to fucking follow the plot. No, anyhow. you, you just, just watch the movie. Yeah. You know, well, you know, that was one of my favorite things. Like, um, our friends, uh, so, uh, uh some of our friends put on a bike show yeah. in Mexico city. Yeah. And, um, and uh, again, shout out to fucking Charlie and Juan Pablo and and, and, and everybody down there in Mexico City, uh, uh, and uh, they um, two time two things we did that were awesome. Yeah, at, uh, was one is uh, for the show um, they had uh, luchador masks made. Yeah, but they had them made at the the gym, the luchador training. Oh, gym, that's cool. Where yeah. all the luchadors like train and shit, yeah. like the legit ones and yeah. shit. So we went there to pick up the masks. And uh, it's a it's a funny story that was probably better off off uh, off thing, but um, <laughs> but like it was like the masks were late and they weren't sure they were going to be delivered, and uh, and uh, you know, for lack of a better term, like they had to go find out about the masks. And me and Dan went, and I didn't know if we were going to be getting into like some fucking. You know oh, what kind of situation yeah. we were walking into, or whatever. But but you know, me and Dan went with, to to help out. But anyway, th that was cool. And then the other, the next time we went, um, th we went to an actual event, a luchador event. Yeah, and that's got to be wild, right? It was fucking awesome, man. Yeah. And, and like we had fucking rad seats, and uh, and uh, it's just pure insanity. It's yeah. just pure insanity, and it's the funnest thing ever. So if even if you're not a wrestling fan or like yeah. a, like an old Santo, like a you know movie fan or anything, if you're ever in Mexico City, you should make sure you go to a luchador match yeah. because it's like one of the funnest things. That I, I like I don't go to like wrestling here or anything. Yeah, I did yeah. when I was a kid or whatever, but it, it, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just pure insanity, and they there's a lot of theatrics and there's yeah. a lot of like foolishness that's fucking awesome. Yeah, see, you know, like it, it, it's funny because like it, we're talking about this earlier uh, off podcast like a few minutes ago, like as far as wrestling, like I never got into wrestling when I was like a little kid. Like I, I would like see a couple of like the bigger matches or something like that that would, you know, be on. But it never really, it, for whatever reason, it never really grabbed its hooks into me. But I have some friends that like are like diehard wrestling guys. Like, Shane. <laughs> is, is he? <laughs> You don't know Shane is a diehard wrestling fan? <laughs> like, Shane Mackey. Yeah. I had no fucking ridiculous, idea. Ridiculous. Ridiculous really? wrestling fan. Like like insanity. Like you need to connect him to your other wrestling friends. Like right, so okay. he has an outlet for all that shit. So like 
I got friends that like, you know, they've like followed this shit from, you know, probably before like even their time. Like they're like fans of like the circuits from like the seventies and shit like that. Sure, yeah. And they'll like send me every now and then like just like like promo clips from like, I don't know, 70s circuit shit. And it's like so fucking lowbrow. Yeah. And like I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? It's like, why aren't I into this? Like yeah, yeah. it's it's great. And it's like it's such stupid entertainment and it's yeah. such it's but like at, at 38 years old, it's like, yeah, I'm 30. I'm going to get into wrestling now. Yeah. yeah like I no. feel like, a, I feel like a dork, you know what yeah, I mean? No, no, like I get it. Yeah. The, the luchador stuff and like, uh, the Japanese stuff. Like I have buddies like, it, like Midwest that like love the Japanese stuff. I and, don't know much about that. Dude. I don't know much about it either. I, I went to Japan last year with a bunch of friends and like we've went go visit. Like, uh, I don't remember the store name, but it was like the store and like, had like tons of costumes from like Japanese wrestlers. So like, I got like a quick, like rundown of everything. And like, for like, as far as like weird, like just culty subculture things, like, I mean, in Japan, it's probably fucking huge for all I know, but I mean, like, like for like American guys to be into like that one specific scene of Japanese, it was like fucking wicked interesting, but it's like so extreme. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, once again, I asked myself, I'm like, is it too late for me to get into this shit? Yeah, or like, why don't I like this? Why don't I like, but I mean, I do like it. Like they send me cool shit and it's like. You know why? I can, I'll tell you right okay, now. Because there's too much shit in the world. There's too much weird, quirky, underground yeah, shit. Yeah. So you got to you gotta pick your lane and, and stay in your lane. And, I, and you can appreciate the other shit. Yeah. But you can't be into everything, dude. There's yeah, not that, enough time in the day, man. I, I mean, as it is like right now, like. You got your movie poster thing and dude, your, your, I, I mean, your, your B-horror shit. And, I'm so fucking like. And I'm mediocre at the shit that I'm into because I don't have fucking <laughs> yeah, time yeah, to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like it, it. People just can send me cool shit, and I can appreciate it for that that short thirty second clip of something on fucking YouTube or something. Yeah. But, you know. But you got to think. There's like there's people that are only into you know that. Yeah. And so they're gonna be way more hardcore about it or die hard about yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. Or like you know like the movie posters. Like you, I know you collect an array of things. Yeah. But there's probably people that only collect certain subsets of even the array of things that you're into. Yeah, I and I mean I've even tried to like like because as you said like I collect like a lot of like 70s, 60s like Euro trash posters like yeah. horror movie stuff like a lot of American stuff too. But like you know like I'll get like fixated on like a specific sized poster from like a specific <laughs> country and it's like it's like. All right, like I'm just going after just Spanish posters <laughs> that measured at like 27 <laughs> by 39, like. I don't know anything about who designed these posters, but the art is fucking great. Like, it's just, I'm going after these set of movies. And then it's like, I'll like kind of dig the well as deep as I can and nothing will pop up on like auction sites or like, yeah. you know, like trade sites. And then I'm like, okay, I guess I got to go to Japan and get really into the 20 by 28 size to like, see, you know, and it's see, like, and this is where I learned things. I didn't even know that size was one of the, the poster size was oh, yeah. one of the things that makes something collectible. Yeah, and it, it's it and 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 nothing's frameable either, dude. No, they're, they're huge. It, like, like some of the huge ones. It, like my my buddy Chris yesterday, he just sent me like just this giant tube. Like we because I do a lot of trades with a lot of dudes from like different parts of the country and like overseas and stuff like that. And he just sent me this huge tube. And like I opened it up and it's like it's like a forty by sixty like poster of like this movie called like Dead of Night, and it's like. It's awesome. And I like, and I have a couple of frames that could fit that, but I have like other posters in it. And I'm just looking at them like, this is fucking awesome that I own this, you know? But I'm like, the fuck am I going to do it's it? It's going to stay in the fucking tube for fucking ever, you know? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's like, it's going to be next to the thousand other posters that yeah. I fucking have, you know? It's like, the collecting shit is definitely at, at, at some sort of sickness because it's like, like, not like hoarding, but kind of. It's like hoarding a specific thing. I, 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 I don't know, because I, I, I've i fallen to that, too. Dude, I have yeah. so many old vintage, like, 60s and 70s, like, vintage chopper magazines. I don't have time to go through all no. that shit. They're all in fucking crates. You know what I mean? What, what am I going to do with that? But guess what? If, if, like, the house is burning, I'm going in and fucking grabbing them. You know what I mean? Dude, if my house is burning, I'm just letting it fucking burn. <laughs> yeah, no, you know? I Like, know. I'm, I'm going to... I'm, I'm, I'm it's becoming, fresh. I'm, I'm become no, not even starting fresh Buddhist monk. That's like, what I mean. That's I'm gonna, what I mean. I'm going to get an apartment. Yeah. You know, yeah. have nothing have own nothing. nothing. I don't even want a picture on the fucking wall. Dude, I, I just think want, about that. I, and, 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 and you know, I've, I've thought about doing before, like Dude. even to narrow things down. I'm like, I got too many goddamn fucking band shirts. And I'm like, yeah. why don't I just buy five pairs of Levi's and just five black fucking t-shirts? And that's one less goddamn thing. I got to think about yeah. every fucking day. Dude, there's my uniform for the rest of my life. I, I don't even know how many hundreds of black shirts. Cause, cause I got 
motorcycle and chopper black shirts. Yeah. I got punk rock and hardcore yeah. fucking but annoying fucking black shirts. I, I, and then I wear like the same five anyway. You know yeah, I mean? and so I only ridiculous. get rid of fucking shirts it's, either when like there's like an outrageous fucking hole on them or fucking I outgrow them or they shrink or something yeah. like that. You well, know then that's saying? when I de- that's when I designate them to shop shirts. Like, yeah, that's like what this is. Well, you I mean, you know, lift, of, yeah. you know, like you know, I'm, I'm sure you're. You're, you're lifting enough heavy stuff and building bikes that fucking things get caught on t-shirts oh, all yeah. the time. No, so, I just so. welding and cutting and grinding like yeah. just fucking devastate devastates everything. I look like a hobo half the time, <laughs> but, but what, I don't, it, I don't I, care. The, the whole collection mentality thing is definitely like you're trying to fill like some sort of like emotional void or something yeah, like that. Like either absolutely. either your parents hugged you too much, they didn't or hug not you enough, enough you yeah, know? yeah, or like it's just like. You had a creepy yeah. uncle. Yeah, you know, like he, he, he diddled you, so now you have like, you know, 100, 100 biker magazines sitting underneath your bed, you know? But I'm, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, it's like, oh, I had a rough day at work. I'm going to buy this $30 fucking poster on eBay. And then yeah. like it shows up like a week later and it's like with like other packages that you haven't even opened and you're like, yeah. Yeah. I, there'll be times where I like, I'll get home and like, and you're an asshole too, because you show me the biker ones and I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, I got to have that. I love that movie. Yeah. And then I got one. I got one sitting right over. I'm like, Right in that white box. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck am I going to do with that? Yeah, it's so fucking yeah, huge. Yeah, and, and <laughs> it's it's funny because like like my wife every now and then she'll be like, I'll order shit and I'll just fucking forget about it. And if I order shit from like overseas, like it yeah. takes like a month or so. Yeah, and it's a this, mystery. Like, and at this point, I've completely fucking forgotten about it. Yeah. So like she'll be like, yeah, like she, I'll you know because I'm I'm obsessive. Like so I'm like at work and I'll text her and I go, Yo, did you get the mail today? We got any mail? And she'll be like, Yeah, you got something from France. And I'll be like, What the fuck did I order from France? Yeah. <laughs> and then like. Like, you know, it was even funny. It was like, I, I got like a poster from like Italy, like two weeks ago, that, like a week and a half ago. And as I opened it, like, I was like, I had it and I like put it on like the table. I'm like, oh my God, man, maybe I should let this fucking thing air out. <laughs> Give it a like, couple weeks. Some, some Italian fucking probably <laughs> yeah, yeah. coughed C19 all over yeah, it, and I'm yeah. going to like, like yeah. just infect the entire, fu- but I opened it right there. I was like, yeah, oh, we're going to get this thing anyhow. Like, let's see yeah, what these posters look like, you know? Speed it up. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. So, I mean, uh. You know, with this podcast, we like to go into tangents and then go into things. We, we haven't even, st- we, we yeah, haven't even started, started it. It's just off been as tangents. Tangent. <laughs> it's just going to, this, this episode is just going to be tangents that build on tangents and then and then go from whatever. And then, you know, just like your standard shows, as we get drunker, it just gets a, yeah. even even more wild. Absolutely. What do, nice. what do you got there that you're opening? I don't know. Fucking, uh, I don't know. Why don't you read it for me? I'm fucking. Taconic Distillery. Founders straight rye whiskey, and it's yeah. even hand numbered. It's like a hardcore oh. seven inch. Oh man, fucking maybe I shouldn't be drinking this. Maybe I should put it on discogs or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. there must be. You know, that's the thing is though, anything that there is, like there is probably a weird whiskey collector market that you know, like oh, you know, I'm like or whatever, like whatever, whatever there is, there's a collector market it, for something, and it gets fucking nuts. Uh, dude, you know something? It's it's the fucking worst, man. Like, and, and it's it sucks too, because like like I I realize I'm like talking shit about myself as far as being yeah. a collector, but no, I mean it's, it's fine. like you look at like other collectors, and it's like. Oh, you're such fucking nerds. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. I thought like record collectors were like fucking bad, but there's like these like groups of people that are just like into collecting Blu-rays and they're the biggest fucking losers ever. <laughs> like, you're like, like, you're in, like, in the hierarchy of collectors, they're on, they're, on, they're, yeah, they're, they're at the bottom. They're, 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 they're below record collectors, man. You know, like Blu-ray, but just Blu-ray in general, any, well, any kind of movie? No, nah, like mostly horror stuff, but it's like, like just movie collectors, like Blu-ray collectors, like v- VHS collectors is fucking insane, man. Like people are in that, but it's like, like I put them as bottom feeders underneath record collectors. To me, it's all laser discs and beta, beta max. <laughs> Listen, I'm sure there's that, that'll be in like another two years, you know, yeah, that'll be yeah. popular. but like the whole thing, as far as like collectors go, like in my mind, it's just like, Cause everything goes back to like, what can you like, what can you impress the opposite sex with? You know, like, no, <laughs> yeah. hear me out on this. Hear me uh, out on this rant. But I don't think there's a lot of members of the opposite sex that are going to be imposed by, uh, be impressed by an angels die hard oh. original movie poster. That's like 60 by 40 or whatever the fuck it is. I opened um, it up. and I was like, fuck, I, if I went to Freeman, it's going to be like $2,000, man. I'll, I'll send you a website where you can order <laughs> No, but I mean, it's like, as far as like record collectors, like say if you just like picked up some like some some chick from like a bar you could like bring her back home like as long as your house doesn't fucking look like a shithole yeah you know you'd be like she could home and she'd be like wow this guy's got a lot of records and you'd be like well this is you know 
this record is, I mean, you're not going to like pull out like a fucking cannibal corpse fucking LP or some shit like that, but you'd be like, you know, you'd be like, Oh like, yeah, you like Bathory, you know, but I mean, you're going to, here's a test press of the, uh, uh, you know, you, you, necro seven. Yeah, yeah. You you could maybe impress her with like your, uh, your musical knowledge and she'd be like, well, he's an interesting guy. Like he's yeah. like, he's like into music and like, you know, but if you were like, yeah, like here's like all this like rapey, like VHS horror movie stuff. She's yeah. like, she's like, yeah, like yeah, I'm, I'm going to like get it. An Uber, the fuck out of here. Like, you know, so it's like, that's bottom feeder shit, right? Yeah, there. yeah, no, no know, I like, get it. I get it. Like the, like the poster stuff, like if I was a single man, I could maybe bring some girl home and be like, oh, he's into collecting art, you know? But it's like yeah. really like, you know, like women in prison movies and like <laughs> yeah, Nazi yeah. exploitation <laughs> shit. Yeah. It's 60, like, oh, yeah. 60s grindhouse. Yeah, and you know, it's like, whatever, yeah. you know, but I, I mean, those, but, those are the type of chicks that I can actually talk to because like, yeah, yeah, they're damaged like me, you know. But you know what? I, I, you know, whatever. For whatever it's worth, like it seems like the '60s and '70s were such like different and kind of cool times. Like you know, obviously there's there's benefits and there's ups and downs with everything. But yeah, if just looking at like shit from the '60s and '70s, it's so fucking rad. Like the artwork, like the craziness, like with like with everything, like with like bikes, like yeah. The mid to late sixties is my favorite era of like choppers, and that's when a lot of those, like uh, the 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 Roger Corman like biker type movies yeah. came out. That are just fucking wacky and like silly, yeah. but they're also like creepy and rapey and like fucking like about like, it. But it's like, but they put it in such a wacky like sense, yeah, like, like it's fucking crazy. Like late sixties all through the seventies, like I think that's probably like. And I mean, we sound like a bunch of old men over here, but yep. I mean, like, whatever. Uh, I mean, we would, like, I wasn't alive in the 60s and I was like a child in the 70s. And so. I wasn't alive in the 70s. I'm yeah. a, I'm a 81 birth, you know yeah, what I mean? But you like, go. you always get like fascinated by the decade that came before you. Yeah. But I mean, like, late 60s, 70s, like across the board, whether it's whatever type of music you want it to be, movies, like any sort of pop culture, bikes, muscle cars. That's just like the, the the pinnacle of like American coolness. Like yeah, yeah. other countries, like when they sweat, I mean, not really too much anymore, but I mean, when they sweat America, they sweat those decades of America. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. it's like, that's when like everything that came out was like, I mean, like even like. But I mean, even like on the subculture stuff, like choppers or like horror movies or yeah, B movies, like, you know, black exploitation movies, all those all, things are fucking hysterical fucking and right. fucking rad. And, dude. and all that stuff never stops being cool. No, and it seems like there was just no holds barred with it. You could get as fucking wacky and crazy as you wanted, and yeah, it just it was just fucking funny. You like, know, you know what I mean? Like, it, like I, I mean, I'll, I'll watch stuff that like you know, and it's it, you just start laughing at yourself. You go, "There's no fucking way that this would pass yeah. any sort of drawing board." Like, no, got this idea about this this movie about sexy women in prison. They go. Nope. Nope. Yeah. You're fired. You're not, yeah. you're not working in this town anymore. Yeah, like yeah. that, that wouldn't happen. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, you know, it's cool that the biker things, you know, the chopper stuff seems to be, I mean, as far as I, of what I can tell, like a chopper thing seems to be a dedicated, like, you know, dedicated to that era kind of still, like there's a, an appreciation for. Yeah, no, but there's always a creeping element of like, even in the chopper world and the motorcycle world, which to me was always the last bastion of just fucking, for lack of better words, like, like freedom in the sense of like, whatever the fuck you, whatever, like, yeah. you know, like tolerance and freedom. Yeah. But now there's a lot of like the, the regular mainstream shit is like kind of like seeped in a little bit. And there's a lot of like, still like little, not a lot, but there's like that whole like. PC type of thing. Yeah. Not that, you know, and the, you so, know. so you can't like, you can't put like a giant like swath sticker flag on the back of your chopper anymore. No, <laughs> and, no, no, no. And that's the thing though. In the sixties, yeah. that was a big thing. Yeah. But what people don't realize, a lot of those guys were war with two vets and they were just showing off their fucking battle trophies. Oh, that's cool. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so like, or, or it was like a wicked anti-establishment, like fuck, fuck you, you to the yeah. man or quote yeah. unquote freak out the squares, that yeah. type of shit. And uh, it wasn't, you know, you know, it wasn't like you were like goose stepping and fucking whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, but yeah, nowadays, yeah, you would. It's 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 not a. It's a little like a lot of the bike shows won't let a bike in if it has any of that type really? of stuff on it. So See, which is weird. And I'm like, the, like the motorcycle world was like one of the, like you know, growing up in the pod, like we said, hardcore and punk rock and oi and all that stuff. Like, um, you know, to me that was the next step. 
But there was always like different elements into the motorcycle. Like when I got into, there wasn't a lot of hardcore kids in, into the yeah. motorcycle stuff yet. Now there's a lot, and it's it, it of, seems like it seems like kind of like the uh, the retirement thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm too old to go to shows. So <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, gonna work. Gonna work on my bike. We'll yeah, wake up yeah. Sunday morning, drive yeah. down to Newport, get what, some clam cakes. <laughs> what, what it used to be like a uh, rockabilly and ska were like the skinhead retirement. Now it's yeah. motorcycles, dude. It, it, or, or you know what it is? Or it's fucking acoustic side projects. Man. Yeah, like yeah. Like when it's it's like you know something like. You're not John Prine. You're not fucking <laughs> Bob Dylan. Like, you know. Yeah, there's certain people that can do it, and there's certain people that need to fucking stay in their lanes. Like, you know, and, 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 and I'm not against anybody trying some new shit. You know what I mean? Like, whatever, dude. Listen, uh, it, if you have enough guts to get on a fucking stage with an acoustic guitar and a mic in front of your face, you got more balls than what I do. Sure, absolutely. I might not buy your record. Yeah. You know, but I don't have the guts to fucking do that. No, no. You know no. what I mean? Like, fucking, you know. But, you know, someone who's actually, like, a talented musician, like, they, they can a lot of times pull off, you, you know, not just because he's a friend of mine, but, like, Lenny Lashy, for example, yeah. does a fucking stellar job of it. I'm not into acoustic shit. Yeah. I've seen a couple of his sets. I stand there and fucking watch it. I'm like, damn, yeah. this is good shit. Yeah. If someone can make me do that, then it's, le like, a legitimate good. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that are doing it, and it's kind of see-through, like, it's just a new cool thing. You know what I mean? And it's like, all right, yeah, fuck you, dude. You know, like, but it, you know, that's music across the board, yeah, man. You got you to wonder where, like... uh you know, and, and as far as like, a, you know, I've been a musician since I was like 15, 16. And like, I, I'll be the first to tell you, like, I am not a good guitarist, man. Like, I'm I'm good at what I do, but like, I'm more of a fucking magician than an actual guitarist. <laughs> like, I'm good at like, like, you know, doing little things that people think that I might be like pretty decent. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> really, I'm just ripping off people that did it way fucking better than what the fuck I do it, you know? But yeah. I mean, it all depends on like. I don't, I'm, I'm losing train of thought here, but I guess it all kind of just depends on like where your heart is. Like, are you making music for yourself? Are you making music for this is what's hot right now? Absolutely. You know and and I mean? that's what I was kind of getting at, but you said you it know? way better. And it, it is, it, it's, it's the intention behind it. And it, people don't always see how see through it is because you can fool a lot of people. Yeah. And it, it, you know, and like it, it's funny, like, uh, cause even like my whole, my whole view of making music has, has changed as uh, I've gotten older where like, I don't give a shit about playing shows anymore. Like it's an excuse for me to hang out with friends. That's yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like there's like guys that I work with where like they might, you know, they might go see the Red Sox at a different state. They all get together. Like that's their version of like leaving their family for the weekend and like, you know, hanging out with the guys, you know what I mean? Sure. Going wild for that one weekend. Going, like, going to, this is hardcore. Yeah. Except like they're, they're going to the Red Sox that's, playing that's, in that's, Detroit that's, or something. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's like if I play like a show in like Philadelphia or something with like Hammer and the Nails or something like that, it's just an excuse. Like the show is like, uh, I don't know, after the show, it'll be fun, I guess. Like there'll be some, there's a couple of friends' bands on the bill. Like it'll be good. But it's like, yeah, what else can we do? Like, is there like a local brewer? You're going for the hang. <laughs> yeah, I'm going for the hang. Yeah. Man. You no, know what I, I mean? And I it's get like, it. And it's like the practices, like, you know, it's like, Dude, we'll have a practice like once every couple of months. And it's like, because everybody's got their own jobs, families and everything like that. Everybody. And it's just an excuse. Like half the time when we have band practice, like there'll be like one band member missing. Yeah. You know, be like, I can't get like, you know, like kids are sick. You know, it's so-and-so's birthday. You know, Well, it is, it's a whole different game being in a band when you're in your 30s or and, 40s. And I'm, it the, is. I'm the youngest dude in that band. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, you know, but. That's what, that's what I mean. And it's like, uh, uh, but like being in a band when you're 18 is awesome. Because you still hang around with like 400 people. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you know, like, uh, well, I don't know about nowadays, but when we were kids, like yeah. there was a lot more people around and and you, you had a big, big uh, real life social network and yeah. then you know you you rolled with a lot of fun, a lot of people and then you know you did a lot of shit and you didn't have as many responsibilities but you know now people got jobs and kids and houses <laughs> and mortgages and, and and bills and it's it's not as easy to just yeah. but, go but, go off for three weeks unless you're doing it professionally you yeah know? which i mean it's hard to do and like you know people that are touring musicians professional musicians i mean like not even like talking about things that are happening right now would like you know everybody not yeah. being able to tour but i mean like barring any shutdowns of yeah of i venues mean like you know something like that's 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 a hard fucking life and like that's especially if you got a family at home and you're gonna be fucking touring like it's like unless you're really making some fucking money out there yeah, like you absolutely. know and, and at what price you're missing your kid's fucking birthday you're missing your fucking anniversary sure, you know yeah, what i yeah. mean and it's like you're having a good time while you're out there but it's like eh, like 
I hate touring. Yeah. It's I, not, we're not, know, at, like, no one, no one in the punk rock or hardcore is really at a, like a Motley Crue level. So you've got to tour a substantial amount to, to be able to, to live off it. You know, like you can't, you can't go out for like two months. You got to go out for like yeah. six, seven, eight months to, to really. Yeah. And like, you know, something like, you know, like I've been fortunate where I've played some like cool shows, like overseas and stuff like that with friends and everything like that. But, uh, I mean, like we would make like maybe a little bit of money that weekend. Like, cause like, you know, like people would just fucking stupid with buying merch, but I mean, long run, man. Like, you know, I was driving up to Boston like twice a week, like yeah. for, for band practices, like, Oh, I didn't make any fucking money, dude. No, like, like no, I just, no. I just got repaid like all the money back, that I, yeah. I pent in gas. You know yeah, what I sure. mean? It's no, like, no, I, get, I got yeah. a free vacation. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, but it's like, you know, uh, but those days are probably fucking over with anyhow. I'm fucking fine with that. Like, but no more hammer and the nail shit. No hammer and nails definitely keep on going, but we're such a low key band. Battle ruins is done, man. That, you think so? Oh, a hundred percent, man. We put the fucking nail on that, dude. Uh, you know, well, you guys, whether it was uh, because of uh, uh, a genius marketing plan or just because of circumstances, you guys had a pretty smart way well, of going about things because like, it was like, <laughs> oh, our first show's in Sweden. You know? Well, see, the thing is this, like, it was funny because I was listening to you and Ryan this morning, like when I was finishing up Ryan's podcast. And when you guys started talking about that, like I, I was like sitting on my toilet and I just started like laughing like an asshole. And I'm like, I'm like, these guys, I'm like, I, I was like, when, when, when Josh has me on, I got to set them fucking straight about this. But it's like that whole band, like, like, so the thing is, it's like the way that that band started was like, we're in lovely lads. All right. Yeah. And then like, like that band just kind of ran its course. All right. And then like, like Brendan and like, uh, I forgot who else. Like it was like Brendan and I, it wasn't really mine and Pierce. Like, I don't think Pierce, but it, it was like, it was like, well, let's do something different. Like kind of more or less same lineup. So like we formed rival mob. Yeah. So like I was in the rival mob for maybe about off and on for maybe like the first year or so. Like I didn't record the demo. Like I was on the first LP, even though I played like shit on it. I wrote a good amount of the demo songs, but like, so it, that aside, like we did that. And then those guys, and then I, I bailed out on that because like, it just started getting too big and like I was working a lot, you know, and like, yeah, it, I can't, I can't play a show in New Jersey on a, a fucking Tuesday night. I got yeah, fucking work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it was like, but me and Pierce, like we always like loved oi. We always liked like harder sounding stuff. Yeah. So we're like, we had like, I, a, I, we had, we had these leftover lovely lad songs. I fucking love hard oi. And it seems like a lot of the oi. It doesn't exist anymore. It dude. doesn't. It sucks. It doesn't. And, or exist. it's like, now it's street punk or something. And it's like, and you know, whatever. But you like, know something, man? Uh, like uh, Blitz, like no one, like Blitz to me is still like top five, rec well, voice of a generation, top five records of it's all time. It's a cool record, man. And it, like it, just yeah. gravelly fucking hard fucking it, voice talking about fucking blood on the streets uh, and yeah. fucking whatever, dude. Like, like, you know what I mean? The only music that like I got into when it was, when like I was a little kid was like stuff like Condemned 84, like yeah, Combat well, 84. That's good. That's like, good. Yeah, yeah. Sketchy, e sketchy shit. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I like sketchy fucking music. doesn't mean I'm sketchy, <laughs> yeah. but like sketchy music is even more cultish and I'm obsessed with like cultish, shit. cultish underground stuff. And it's yeah, like, I guess, it's like, yeah. Oh, this is ugly stuff that we shouldn't be listening to. And it's like, yeah. Or you could, what's, what's this all about? I want to listen to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's but like, it's the same way. Like you, you're like looking at like, you know, like a movie like blood sucking freaks. It's a weird little cultish movie. Yeah. You probably, you know, you don't really shouldn't be seeing it or don't want to be seeing it, but you're going to watch it anyway. Cause yeah. you just want to see where the fuck it's going. Well, see, like that's my mindset with, with music. All right. Yeah. So like, then like me and Pierce had these songs that were like left over. So we're like, all right, well like, let's just start a band and like, it's just a studio band. Like, yeah. So we wrote some songs. It was kind of hard sounding. Like we had Justin like do drums I did both guitar tracks, Pierce did that. And then like, we just sat on the recording for like a few months, like not even with a singer. And then we're like, oh, we're going to do this. And we're like, hey, let's see if Brendan wants to sing. So we had no idea what, you know, he was even going to sing. Like he did the vocals on his self and then he sent it to us and we're like, oh wow, this is cool. This, yeah, this sounds good. Like, let's just. He switched it up a lot too on that. Yeah. Well, cause I mean, it turns out like he can actually fucking sing. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like, no, that's know? what I mean. It, like legitimately. Like, and I'm not saying it because you're in front of me. I've, yeah. You can ask Pac or other people. I'm like, and, and you know, because a lot of people say, but like Battle Room's genuinely a good fucking band. Like, I, I, yeah. I, I like, I, it's on my gym soundtrack, well, like it's, a couple it's, of songs. It's you know like, what I mean? something, it's like, and it's even like, you know, take you singing for like American War Machine. Like, you're not making, like, you want to make music that you'd be like, 
I would like to see this band and listen to this band. Like, like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not that you're like driving around listening to your own fucking band's music, no, no. You, but it's only like, when I got to learn the words because we're going <laughs> to yeah. do a show and it's been a year since we've done a yeah. show. Yeah. But I mean, it's the same thing. It's like, I, I'm only interested. In, I don't give a fuck what other people like. I only want to make music that I like. And yeah. If other people like it. Well, all right, cool. That's, that's cool. That's flattering. But like, I really don't give a fuck about your opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. So, I mean, like, we had those extra songs. Oh, well, sorry for saying I like your band. Dude. No, it's fine. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative. Yeah. I'm just fucking with I'm just fucking I, I, with I mean, the opinion of, of, of friends are the only opinion that, like, you know, that, like, actually matters. You no, know what I mean? But, like, some, like, some, like, I don't know, some crazy German, like, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't give a fuck if you like my band. <laughs> yeah, like, shut cares, up. Dude. You know yeah, what I mean? Relax, yeah. But, uh, you know, but, uh, so we had those songs and, like, it came out real good. And then, like, our, our buddy Bob, like, he was, like, starting that label Rock and Roll Disgrace. Yeah. And he's like, hey, let me put this out. And we're like, we're like, all right, cool. But like, the thing is, this is like, we hated like fucking like, like the whole snobby record collector stuff. Yeah. So we're like, all right, cool. Like, yeah, you can put the seven inch out, but like no special editions, just seven inch black vinyl, no contact information. Like if you look at that first seven inch, there's no contact information on who we are. Like the, the cover's got a, a, like silhouettes of us, but you can't really tell yeah, who yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and like eventually because of the rival mob connection, like people kind of put two and two together and stuff like that. And every now and then, like for like, I think that was maybe about 2009 or so from 2009 until like 2013, 14, we would get show offers and we're just like, no, like, yeah. and it wasn't like a marketing thing or something. Like it that. was, like, you were just waiting for that offer to go up. No, and it, up it wasn't. And up. It, no, it, <laughs> I'm, I'm just it, fucking with yeah, it. I'm I know, just I know. I know. But it wasn't like a marketing thing. I was like, I, we're like, no, we're like, we, we don't fucking play shows. Like, yeah. no, like this is like, we don't even have a second guitarist. Like, no, like not interested. Like, and plus those dudes were real busy with Rival Mob, like being the fucking Beatles and shit like that. So, I mean, it's like, and I was just working. Ah. Uh, and around that time, I also joined Hammer and the Nails and stuff like that, which is just a nice low key band for a dude with my schedule. So anyhow, like, like after about four or five years, we we're like, Oh, we got some songs. Like it'd be cool to like, maybe like make an LP. So we made an LP. Bob put that out also. And it was the same thing. It was like, yeah, like really no special editions. Like, you know, and I think he ended up doing special editions anyhow, but like, and that like, it kind of became like its own runaway thing. And it was like, you know, you see like the records like selling like on eBay for like, or fucking discogs for like retired money. And you're like, but uh, yeah, it's crazy. You know, it's, it's kind of fucking stupid. And it's like, all right. It's like, okay. Like people want to spend money, high expensive money, like on a record. It's like, I spend a lot of crazy, stupid money on things that I like. Like I can't really shit on them too much, no, but, like, no, but it's, it's like, it's not me that's selling that fucking record for 200 fucking dollars. Yeah. No, I, you get, know what I mean, I get, and yeah. then it was like, but it was like one of those things where it's like, you know, Bob's like small label. Like he's not like a big, like hardcore label or something like that. And half the time, like we were like, he was just fronting the money and we would design everything totally sure, DIY yeah, ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, we made a thousand records. Those sold out. Yeah. I don't know. Like we'll get around to pressing some more when we fucking feel like it. It's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. we're like, we're like, Oh, supply and demand. It's not like, oh, like, it's not like we're like oil barons or something. Like let's cut off the oil. Like they want our records. And it's like, it, like at, at kind of at that point, it was just like, people were hitting us up and being like, Oh, we can't get your records, blah, blah, blah. Like you guys are jerks for not keeping this impress. And it's just like, well, okay. Like we'll just put it on iTunes and like Spotify and all that shit. And you guys can fucking enjoy. The, yeah, sure. You guys yeah, can yeah. enjoy the music. Cause like, I mean like. After you've already sold you $200 copies on. on yeah, 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 exactly. Now, now yeah. we'll put it on. But, it, but it's like, <laughs> it's like kidding. one of those things where it's like, it's like, it's like, Dude, and honestly, man, like, I, like, I don't know if you still collect records. I don't collect records or anything. Like that. No, you, you know, you know what I do? It's weird. Uh, uh, friends uh, or brothers of, of mine and bands, I'll buy their records to yeah. support. Yeah. But I'm like, fuck, now I got another fucking thing, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I do it like just to support things I like or, yeah, or, I, or, or friends. Yeah. You know what like, I mean? like that's, that's, that's one way of, of doing it. I get, I get what you're doing, but I mean, for the most part, like, Dude, people nowadays just buy fucking records like they're like trading fucking baseball cards. Yeah, it's no, like, and that's they, lame. They, it they, it they, should be because you have a connection or you really like. You the like record. the fucking music, so if yeah. you like the music, you know something like. Let's be honest, everybody's listening to their fucking music on their goddamn fucking phones today. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But and like, I do it out of so, an obligation to like support because, because yeah. I do more. If I'm listening to music, 
I, I, I don't have time to sit in my house and, and put on a record anymore. Who the fuck I, when I was a kid, I did. Yeah. But now I don't. No, like, of course I'm going to listen to it. I'm so, listening to it when I'm in my truck driving and I put it on Spotify or some shit. So, you know I, mean, what I mean, like like records nowadays, man, like people buy them for the sole purpose of just being like, hey, look, I joined a fucking secret club. I yeah. have this fucking record. You don't. I'm going to fucking Instagram it and yeah. it's going to be spinning on my fucking player. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm a real music yeah, lover yeah. and I'm going to be listening to it. And then, you know something? You put that record in your fucking milk crate and then you listen to that fucking record on your fucking phone because you bought it off a of fucking band camp or some shit yeah, like that. Or whatever, and it's yeah. like, so it's like, there's real fucking no connection with the fucking music. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't know, maybe things are different over, over in Europe. I, I, I got no idea. I'm a, I can only see what I see fucking over here. Sure. But it's like, it's like people are just trading. It's like people are trading fucking baseball. It's currency. Over. Yeah. It's, it's currency. Yeah. That's what it is. And, uh, so I like, you know, but it's always been like that. I mean, you know, yeah, I guess it's, it is. to some extent there's people that really are involved in it because they have a deep love and passion yeah. for the music. And then there's people that are like, Oh man, if I flip this and I get that. And there's people yeah. that are just like hustlers for yeah. w in whatever world, you know, I'm sure there's poster hustlers. Like, you know oh, what I mean? Dude, they're scum fucking yeah. dogs too, man. Yeah. But, but you know, you know, so it's the same thing in any, it's weird because like any little subculture in and the, with collectors and stuff, the same shit exists. Yeah. Like you have the same, you got the people that are die hard because, and, and then, the, and then there's the people that are like profiteering off shit. And, and yeah. And, and, and then there's people that might be die hard and then they're like, oh shit, I, this is dumb. Now I got to get out of it and yeah, oh, I'm going to buy a house and let me sell all these posters. And, I, you, and so I can get a down payment for you, a house. You know, or, I can, I can see like whatever the hobby is. I can see like doing that. Cause you're like, well, I'm not really into the stuff. So I'm going to sell it. But like people who are like just flippers, they go, I'm yeah. going to buy this just so I can fucking upsell it. Yeah. Like that's, that's fucking scumbag. No. Shit, yeah. You know especially, I mean? especially if you're keeping it out of the hands or make it unattainable for people that really appreciate it and love it. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I mean, I would rather give a record away to somebody who's going to appreciate who's it. Who's really going to appreciate it than yeah. sell it for a lot of money. Yeah. Same thing. You know, I mean, given if I, if I had, the, if you know, given if I had like, if I'm in dire straits, now I'm going to sell the fucking record and make some money so I can pay my mortgage or whatever. But you, you know, Josh, it's, it's, I, I kind of been wanting to talk to you about this. Like, you know, those misfit records that you have. Yeah. Like I'd really like those. <laughs> <laughs> I was get in line, man. I would, I would because, really appreciate those. Well, man. <laughs> I, I I I have already promised uh, at least one of them to Roger All right, uh, okay. for, from AF because uh, because uh, uh, he, he. You mean I, that that guy has a record that 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 guy is missing a record? Uh, he, he probably only has two copies and he needs oh, three. Okay. No, I don't know. I, I'm just fucking around. But yeah. no, like I have one that that he really wants, and it, it's like uh, I've already promised that one to him. But all right. But, but so I, I'm still enjoying those records. Though. Yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, so like we we put out that LP and like it was still like no, we're not playing any shows. Yeah. And then like some dudes from Sweden, they like Rival Mob had just played a show over there, and like one of them like came up to Pierce and was like, "Hey, like I got this idea. We do like this fest, P, P, uh, uh, KSP fest. Like, you know, uh, like uh, not K blah, 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 blah. Uh, whatever. The, uh, we do this fest and uh." You know, like these are the bands that are going to be on it, and like at first we like we we had turned it down, like nah, we're not a fest band, like we don't we don't want to do it, and uh, and then uh, you know, they kind of persisted, and like one of the bands that was going to be just on waiting for that, just waiting for the just waiting for those figures to go up and <laughs> but, that ride to get bigger, but, but one of, <laughs> just one waiting of, it out. One of one of the bands that were, was going to play was uh, Shipwrecked, which like you know those is, are friends of yours. Well, we didn't know them at the time, but oh, like okay. we were like we were like fans of them because like they were like. Scandinavian band that like they like they nailed like that Boston sound that early Boston sound yeah, oh, and yeah. like they were like they're like these guys seem like they're into cool stuff yeah. and it's like man like man, we gotta play that we gotta like we gotta actually make this like a functioning band and it's like but it's a free trip over there and we get to see Shipwrecked and there was like other bands on the bill that we wanted to see and we're like well if there was ever gonna be a show that we we're gonna do like that's the one we can just do this show like and be kind of funny and it's like and it's like and like all of us being dickheads we're like it's kind of a prick move that our first first show is going to just be fucking and at the time i guess it, like we were like thinking it was going to be the only show even though we'd advertise it as our only show but it was like one of those things where it was like it was like well it's kind of a cool prick move that we're like yeah fuck everybody like our first show is going to be over in sweden so like, <laughs> or our, or our only show or whatever. you know so like we ended up doing that and like we worked fucking really fucking hard like for that year and like we got this other dude cliff who was in boston strangler to play second guitar great fucking guitars and like we would have like boot camp 
band practices every week. Sure. And like we sounded fucking tight and like we played that first show and it was fucking awesome. And then I remember after the show like was done, like I was talking to some of the dudes from Shipwreck and they were like, oh, like we would love, I told them, I was like, I was like man, I was like, I'd love to see you guys like play in Boston. Like you guys, like there's a lot of dudes in Boston like like that love you guys. And they were like, oh, if we like played Boston, like would Battle Ruins play? And I'm like, no, 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 no. And, like, they were, and then it was like one of those things where, like I like, became more friendly with those guys. And like I was trying to get them to get booked over there. But it was one of those things where it's like, well, I wanted to make sure that those guys had a good show for their first U.S. show. Sure, yeah, yeah. So then it's one of those things where it's like, okay, like. I'll take on booking the show with like a friend or two. And then it's like, ah, oh, fuck. Why the fuck did I say that? Like, that's like so much fucking work. And oh, now like, fucking shows is hard, dude. Man. And then like, that became like a huge fucking event like that weekend. And then, so we ended up playing that like the following year. And then it was like a month later, like after that show was over, like, like these dudes that I, I guess like <clears throat> good German dudes, they were like from Berlin. They were, I guess they were friends with Pierce and all those dudes from like rival mob. They were like, do you want to play Berlin? These are the bands that you're going to be playing with. And at first we were like, well, we really only want to play with like our friends' bands. And it's like, well, those bands are good. Like, and it's like, all right. Like, and Hammer the Nails got invited to play one of the shows. So we're like, all right. Yeah. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's do it. And that was a good show. And then, you know, we ended up like a year later, like we, we did an LP between that and it came out good. And then like, we ended up playing, uh, got the invite like a year later, play Paris. But like at the time, man, like, I guess we kind of like, uh, at least me, I can speak for myself. Like I kind of started like not losing interest in the band because the band musically was exactly what I wanted to be doing. But like the band got too fucking big. Yeah. You know sure. what I mean? And like, it kind of started losing that cult appeal to me where like, um, uh, like that was the idea of the band is just kind of like, Hey, like this, like I just diehards like that. That's fine. Like not everybody needs to be this band. Like, there's, I'm sure there's many oi bands that are going to be fucking touring every fucking weekend. You can go fucking see them whenever you want. And it's like, let's just have this just be a special just whenever we want. And like, and that's why we only played four shows ever. Yeah. Uh, you know, we worked fucking hard for those fucking four shows. And like, you know, like we'd make a little money during those weekends. But like, we'd end up just spending those, that, that, that money. You know, it's not like, it's not like we're paying any fucking bills with any of that no, stuff. No, no, it's you know not, what yeah, I mean? you're, you're not like you know. set for the, for three months after. No, like, yeah. like, I think like I bought like a guitar pedal and like some movie posters, like in Sweden, like it, it and I, I'll be honest with you, most of those shows like that, like we played, like I made sure there was like a good poster shop in that town <laughs> and like whatever I, I made, yeah. like I would probably drop like 500, $600 on movie posters. Yeah. So I was just like, I was like, oh, we're going to play Paris. I'm like, is there a poster shop in fucking yeah, Paris? Yeah. I'm like, oh, there's a couple of good ones. All right. Like, All right, me, we'll do it. <laughs> let me talk to the guys. Like, you do this. So, so, I mean, like, so, so basically what you're saying is if you want a battle ruin show to happen, make sure there's a good poster shop in your town and you might be able to finagle it, something. It's, it's not happening anymore. <laughs> I know, I'm just it's playing. not happening anymore. Uh, it, the band for me just got too fucking big, man. Yeah. And like, uh, and, and honestly, man, there's just too many fucking nerds into the band. <laughs> like straight up. Like there's just like, there's like, like I met a lot of cool people through that band. Uh, I made music that I liked, but, uh, dude, there was like a lot of people that like, I like just did I, you know, when like, you know, you just start somebody like some asshole, like, Oh, you're stadium boy. And it's like, you know, because like we've played for, or like jet setting oi or some shit like that. And it's like, it's like, Motherfucker, I work 60 hours a week unloading a fucking truck. It's yeah. like, I'm way more blue collar than what you are. I'm doing that and I can't fucking play every fucking weekend. Yeah, Not that yeah, I yeah. want to play with you, yeah, yeah. stupid ass. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like, you know, it's like, I, I don't know. Like, well, you know, there's one thing I've noticed that it seems like every scene has politics and weird stuff, but yeah. like the oi and like skinhead scene, dude. There is so much drama and politics in that world. It's, I don't even fucking understand. I'm like, it's, it's fucking weird, dude. It's so fucking stupid. Man. Yeah. It's it, like, it's like, you know, and, and, you know, that was always kind of like a big fucking, you know, kind of like a fucking rough and tumble, blue collar, working class dude thing. And I'm like, dude, like so many people are like fucking clucking hens in that fucking world, man. I, it's crazy. I, I like that type of music. Well, not like contemporaries now yeah. but i like that type of music because it was lowbrow and it was fucking kind of sketchy yeah you know what i mean like there was kind of like a dangerous element to it and it goes back to everything fucking like dude like like american hardcore like you know like early new york stuff like you know like 
dude, like you just hear story. Like before, everything was everything had a documentary on every particular scene, and like now yeah. everything knows. Like you would just hear like like stories about yeah. like so and so did this or this fight happened there, and yeah. you'd be like. Sounds like the most insane shit. Ever. Or just the, especially shows in New York. The story half the time was just getting to the show. Well, yeah, you'd hear about shows in New York. You'd hear about shows in in like in Boston. You'd yeah, hear about yeah. shows in the Midwest, and it's just kind of like, oh, those shows were like, yeah, there was like some bad people that would go up to yeah. those shows, and like you'd like as a little kid, like you know, like like I mean, obviously, like I started going to shows like you know, like mid to late nineties, like you'd hear about those, like of what happened, like in like early eighties or like mid eighties yeah, yeah. or like, even like, even like early nineties, like stuff that you missed maybe 10 years before or five years before. Yeah. And you're like, wow. Like, I mean, the, the, you know, as you've stated before in other podcasts, like the internet wasn't around, YouTube wasn't around to see all this stuff. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I, but like, like that dangerous element and like sketchy element is gone with everything. And it's like, it's, Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, it's like just the cities are pretty representative of what, you know, like the scenes are going to be like in a way, like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the, the cities are so like, you know, look at Boston now. Like yeah. there's no combat zone anymore. There's no like, oh, I wish there was. Like, you go down to Fen, go down to Fenway. It's all corporate shit and nice shit and like high end shit. Yeah. And you know, used to be Kenmore square was fucking pretty gritty. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's not anymore. You go to New York, the biggest case for, Ever. I mean, I, I'm talking about like, you know, our cities that we go to for shows and yeah. stuff. Like New York is so cleaned up compared to what it was, you know, years ago. And so, you know what I mean? Like the, the um, you know, and, and and I think we talked about this maybe with like Craig or something for a little while. There's positives and negatives to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it is good that you don't have to worry about getting fucking jumped or work, looking over your back and, and, and just walking down the street anymore. But, you know. The, the the saying that like easy times make soft people is hard times uh, make, yeah, make strong uh, people uh, is a hundred percent true, man. True. Because people are like if you if your biggest concern in this world is what words people use to identify you, yeah. the the world is like the world's pretty good because you yeah. you have the luxury of that's what you're worrying about. It, you know what I mean? Like that, that's that's why like it like like you are not struggling that much, where it's like if your word, if your if your biggest worry is words, you know, some especially words that some total stranger said to you, yeah, on online or said about you online, and it's like I can't understand like the mindset that anybody gets offended with what anything that's on the internet, yeah, anything. It's so retarded. If someone's coming like, at you anonymously, it does not fucking matter it's because like, they're, they're, they're a coward or like they're hiding. And so their opinion doesn't even fucking well, matter. It, you should not allow, allow that to bother it, you. It, it's funny. Cause like, you know, like I look at myself, I'm like, I'm like, all right, like I'm a nobody and I have another nobody from somewhere saying something about me. It's like, all right, this, this, oh, all right, this guy has yeah. no impact on my fucking day. No, like, no, no, no. But it's like, there's people that like, we'll get wrapped up in that. Yeah. And, and it's bothered like, by and, and, it. and that's where I love shitting on those people. Man. Like, <laughs> I, like, you know, like it's, it's funny. Cause like social media, like I've met some legit great fucking like people who, I, who I'll consider best friends through like social media and stuff like that. People from other parts, other parts of the country, sure. or, you know, other part of the world and stuff like that. But like, Oh man, like it really, like it really, like pulls the veil back on like a lot of people that you're like, Ooh, I really used to be into your band. Man, oh, yeah, but yeah. Wow, you are a fucking douche. Yeah. And it's just like, it's like, it's like, I, 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 I great. That, that's, that's another classic band I grew up to that I can't fucking listen to because you're a fucking douchebag. Yeah. You know? And, it's, and like, it's, and it's not only that you're a douche. If you're a douche, it's one thing, but if you are such a douche where I can't even listen to you or, or support whatever it is you do anymore, that sucks, you know? But I, I mean, that's one thing that was like, I felt like was better about growing up. Um, especially getting into these like weird worlds, like, like underground worlds. Like yeah. there was a mystique about it. And it was yeah. like, dude, like, you know, you brought up the Misfit Seven Inches yeah. earlier. Like, when when I was a kid, like I missed that. Like, I, yeah. I I got in around eighty five, right? Yeah, and and all that shit was like eighty one, eighty two, yeah. you know, or, or earlier, you yeah. know, eighty to eighty three or whatever. And I'm like, damn, dude. Like, and then you just see little glimpses of things, and I'm like, man, like in your head, 
the world that you created for this shit was it, probably so much so much better, cooler than what it so much better was, than man. what it actually was. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? It, and, and, it, and, and you're like, damn, like and especially being because you know obviously it's easy to pick the misfits out because they had like such a um, a mystique about a mystique them. about yeah. them, and like you see the records and then you see pictures of them, and yeah. like you never saw them, but you see these pictures, you're like, damn, man, these fucking guys, like you know what I mean, or or like, or, like you know, or whatever you you know whatever band, but like they just had a, a really good like imagery about yeah. them. I I, I and. It, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of documentaries and stuff like that. Like, sure. I wish I had more time to read books and stuff like that, but unfortunately I don't. But like, I can I can watch a documentary and stuff like that. And I appreciate a well done documentary. I appreciate a real good documentary. But like, I try to keep myself in the dark. Like with documentaries now, because like I'm 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 trying to run away from. Like, and this sounds so stupid. I'm trying to run away from fucking knowledge. Yeah. Like I want to be dumb and kept in the dark. Like, you know, like like Godfathers of uh, hardcore. That's a really good documentary. Like, like I love Agnostic Front, but like, there's like, there's that aspect of me when I'm like 15 years old that I'm like, I kind of want to be scared of these guys. Like, yeah. like I, like I don't really want to know everything about them. Like, I, I like, like, I like mystery about it. You know sure. what I mean? No, yeah, and it's that's like, what I mean. The and it's like, of- and it's like, even like, you know, I, I'm trying to think of other documentaries that have come out that like I've kind of, like I've watched and I can appreciate when they're well done. But like, it's kind of like, oh, that's all documented. I kind of, even though I wasn't there, like I, I kind of have a glimpse of what it was, but like, I want my imagination running wild. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And and any scene too, like musically, like, like even with hip hop, like you didn't want to, you know, I think we talked about this with Seamus actually on on the, like, you know, there's artists that you look up to and, or, or, or whatever, like, and 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 then the mythos you've created is probably oh, yeah. way fucking cooler than the than the reality of a situation. So, so, so I mean, there's some people where you know, they're fucking about it and fucking crazy oh, and fucking yeah, sketchy, yeah. and you better fucking watch out. Like, yeah. But there's a lot of them. It's just like it, yeah, whatever. It, it, it's funny, and it's like, and it's like I'm my own worst enemy because yeah. you know, and, and like for years I've wanted to see live footage of septic death. Yeah. Because in my mind, I'm just like, you know, you just like imagine. like I see? haven't and I won't because th- this well, is. It, it just it just circulated. There's like a 30 minute set. I don't want to see YouTube. it. I've watched like the first like five minutes of it. And I was like, I don't need to watch anymore. Because yeah. like, I, like, but in my mind, I'm like, you know, you see Pusshead's art. Like you listen, like yeah. Septic Death, like just sound like just, just M- fucking like crazy. chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and like. it's It sounded like his art. Yeah, Looks. and you like you see like the pictures of him wearing like the discharge pants, and like you're like you're like. You're, no, like, you're, so this is what I was yeah. gonna say is my, I, you know, and I have a bunch of Septic Death records, and yeah. I've always loved them. Um, m- my imagery of Septic Death playing is one picture from Thrasher magazine, <laughs> probably uh, somewhere in the mid '80s. Yeah, and this pus head. And he had a mask, over, like like probably like a shirt sleeve or something over his head with only one eye cut out, it, uh, and you know fucking crazy hair and everything, and yeah, like the bleach jeans and the, all the fucking puck. And I was like, yeah, that's Pusshead. I don't even want to know what the fucking dude looks like. Yeah. I don't know what he looks yeah. like yeah. except for like there's one picture of me had like a black fucking ski, <laughs> like not a ski mask but like a cloth mask over yeah. his with like one eye cut out. And I was like, yeah, dude, that's fucking yeah. Pusshead. Now, that's who Pusshead is yeah. to me. So, I still love his so, art. I so, still love the band because I have not seen him. But but I mean, it's like, it's one of those things where like, if like, so that band, like those live shows, like I, I never came across one, but recently like somebody posted one online and I watched like the first five minutes of it and it's cool. Yeah. But like, I didn't want to watch the first thing. Like he comes out and he's like, you know, kind of like tall, lanky, slinky. He's wearing yeah. like a Freddy Cougar glove and like dudes are like shredding. Fucking yeah, Metallica yeah. comes out and introduce him. And you're like, what the fuck is this? It's like, I'm excited. I'm like, I'm, when I should be doing my fucking circle check at my truck and like yeah. make sure it's road safe. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like, I'm watching, watching it on my phone, watching septic death. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Like, but I'm like, God, I, I don't want to listen. I don't want to watch anymore. Yeah. yeah like, cause yeah. in my mind, I'm just like, I'm just picturing like. I don't know, like dudes getting like hit with like severed limbs and like yeah, fucking sure, like whatever. you know like just chaotic like fucking like yeah, yeah, metal yeah. solos and shit. And it's like, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like I, I just wish, uh, I just wish everything wasn't fucking so easily so ex- demystified. Yeah, yeah, and accessible. but you know when we were kids though, you know I would say like I got a probably eighth generation bootleg VHS of uh there was a TV show in um, 
somewhere in the in the Midwest, it was Michigan or something, yeah. or, or uh, Ohio or something. It was it was it was called Why Be Something That You're Not. Yeah, and yeah. They, I saw a negative the, approach that because that was my favorite band growing up, and I was like, you know, I was like, fuck, dude, I, still I was so should, pissed. Still should be everybody's fucking yeah, favorite band. But you know, like, it, and it was one of those things where I like, never thought I'd get to see him, and I saw that, and I was I was not disappointed with that. And there yeah. was a Misfits episode with that too, and I was like, yeah. that was fucking good too. Um, and and you know, since then, you know, like I've got to see negative approach a bunch of times and especially like the first time or two like it did they're fucking does, awesome yeah they're still good and they still have a good intensity and it, it's cool that it's a lot of the or, original guys you know what i from mean from that scene yeah from like, that scene and uh, it, dude like i think his vocals have actually gotten better yeah because they're just like more shredded it's just like <laughs> like it's just like and, and the, he's the king of like just like one screech like yeah. like he doesn't even enunciate yeah. every yeah. word anymore it's just like Rah! And like between songs, you'll be like, check it out. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. And he's he's actually a very entertaining and, and nice guy, you know. Yeah, what I'm I mean, sure, and yeah. he's cool to talk to. Um, but um, I don't I don't like know him well, but I I just hung out with him a couple times. Yeah, like Civil Defense. I think we played with them. Yeah, we played with them somewhere. Where the fuck did I miss this show? And uh, and I remember like they were set up right next to us, and and like he watched our merch booth for us, and we watched his. You know what That's I mean? And, and it was cool. It was at hell, I think. Man, civil defense, man. Yeah, that was, you, need to, you need to talk about civil defense more. I, 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 it's such a weird thing. Somewhere, I know that Adam has the album that never came out. I've never heard that album before. But it was not fully mixed. What happened was the guy that we were recording with, this guy Paul, yeah, his studio got flooded, and so uh -huh. before we could finish the final mix, all the drives and everything got f like like his. Studio got like seriously flooded yeah. where like everything was got fucked up. Yeah. Like everything got fucked up. So we never finally, I know Bob wanted to put it out for a while and I was yeah. like, dude, it's not like really yeah. mixed. You, and I guess it doesn't even really matter. It's not like some of the friends was, you could probably like, get it mixed. It wasn't like putting out the Metallica black yeah. record or something. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure they could fix some of it and master it or something. It's and, been years since I heard that first, that, that first recording that you guys did, but that was a good fucking record, man. Yeah, it was fun times. It was a fun time. Because it was weird because it was like there was like a resurgence and then like shit got big in New Bedford. And yeah. I always thought it was weird because when I was a kid, there was like seven people into punk rock yeah. in New Bedford. I didn't, and you knew everybody. My, like, my generation fucking, we, yeah. we were like, we're like, oh, we can't really get the shows in Boston too much. And it's like, <laughs> well, let's just start a bunch of hardcore bands and like, yeah, just yeah. play New It Bedford. was all you guys. And that's what I remember yeah. first meeting. I, I was telling someone the story. I think it was Packer. Like, like I remember being a substitute teacher at your high school well, when, when you were. When, when I was listening to that, like, I fucking remember, like, as a little kid, like, in high school, I remember, my God. That dude's in hardcore bands. He's like teaching Spanish in my school. So what the fuck are you doing? But uh, it was funny because it, it, it the, the whole civil defense thing, and uh, it might have been one of the first times that we actually had a conversation conversation. And I don't remember if it was like, it, it was an early civil defense show or if it was not one of the, the first civil defense shows. But I had a part-time job at, at the time working at the Dartmouth Mall. Do you remember the story? I, I, I bet was, I will. Right. Tell me more so, about it. So I was, was this at Reflections? Yeah, it was it was a, it was gonna be a show of reflections, but yeah. it was a show later on that night, and I remember you were doing Christmas shopping, and I was working at uh, outside of a kiosk, a calendar kiosk outside of Walden Books at the Dartmouth <laughs> Mall, and you came over and you're like, "Hey man, you going to the show tonight?" I'm like, "Yeah, man." I'm like, "I'm like, oh, this is fucking old dude that's fucking like built like a gorilla, like fucking he's telling me about a show." I'm like, yeah, I like his man, and then I remember like. I just like gave you like a bunch of free calendars. Do you remember <laughs> I, that? I don't remember this. Dude, <laughs> so so I, bet I, I will. So I like I, I was working at this calendar I, I, I was working at this calendar booth and like they had like when I got the job there, it was just a seasonal seasonal job. It was like seasonal job there and then a few nights a week like working at Walden Books. And like they they was they were like they were like, Yeah, like we got like this loss prevention where like we know we're gonna lose at least like two thousand dollars worth of product <laughs> for the holiday season and like you can't like if you see somebody shoplifting like you can't say anything because there's always that one chance that they're actually going to pay for it and then like I, like legalities or something sure like. so i put it in like my 15 year old mind i'm gonna go i should just let people fucking steal shit so like <laughs> anybody that came by i was you, just like you, was were, like, you want some fucking like you were calendars? helping them yeah, yeah. yeah like i had trades going with the dude yeah. that had, like two kiosks down that worked for like yankee candle fucking you know <laughs> we're doing swap but i remember i gave you like a bunch of calendars so this is the new bedford story there's always a hustle going on you there's know always I mean? a hustle always yeah. Always, always, but uh, yeah, man, those those early New Bedford shows, man, fucking. I kind of remember that you didn't. You were you were too young to go to any of the shows we used to do at Reflections. No, no, I went to all those shows. I'm uh, not Reflections uh, up. Um, the place on a cushion at Ave. 
The curfew. The curfew. Yeah, that was like I I missed that by a few years, man. Because I had like I had uh, there was one that was ITI and and, and uh, citizens arrest. That was a pretty good one. I have I have I have flyers of those shows. Like, yeah, yeah, I, have, I, don't. I have I have a show of you guys uh, with I think it's Hate Breeds opening up for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think <laughs> disrupt. Yeah, man. Uh, I can't remember where I got this. I, I always say, well, like, we were surrounded by greatness, and if we had only stuck with it, we probably could have done something. But like, it was always like Keith went to jail or fucking yeah. something happened. Or- I did see that. I did see that intent to injure show that you guys played at Lupo's with two saddle tendencies, though. Oh yeah, that was in in, in Converge. Yeah, yeah, Converge played. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I. Uh, but my ride was leaving, so I didn't get to see suicidal tendencies. Oh, so they I saw, were actually really good. That so night. I saw you guys, and I guess it was Converge, and yeah, then like was, we yeah. left, and uh. It, it, that might have been one of my first Providence shows. That had to be what, like ninety seven? I believe, yeah, because we were done. We were had been done for a while, yeah. and and um, that dude Pete, rest in peace, Pete Pete Thoreau, who put the show on, like really was on me to get back together to do that show. And I was yeah. like, oh, suicidal. I gotta, yeah, I gotta yeah. do it with suicidal. Um, but yeah, that was the, the that was a good times. So that was when um. John Sladuski was there taking pictures, and he still has some really funny pictures from that show. But that's when he was still Johnny Skinhead. He wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't like a, a long haired stoner rock dude. You know yeah. what I mean? John's John's good guy, man. He's awesome, I, dude. I, I still bullshit with him from time to time. Yeah, no, he's like a that. good dude, man. He he uh, he uh, he he still you know he's into stuff. He rides motorcycles. He trades records, and like wow. almost like on a professional level, he he took all those battle ruins photos, man. Yeah, for those man. records, man. He's a he's, he's a, a good he's photographer. a gifted photographer, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, he does it professionally for the newspaper and stuff. You know, I hope he would be good then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, dude, the, the, my old memory of you is for some reason I just remember you in a green army jacket. Yeah, fatigues, man. I, I I never grew out of. But like you know, the old school like Vietnam green. Yeah, because I used to have one. Um, I, if I could dig it out, like I, I had one when I was a kid, and I remember. Uh, can't remember what was on the back, and then Kev Babola had one, and in, and in, in tape we made the negative approach logo, and they yeah. spray painted around yeah. it. So then when you pulled it off, it was like the NA yeah. was in like negative space, yeah. and I feel like I ended up with that at some point or something, but. Um, I don't even know. Just those are really fucking old, old, old. Uh, that's a long time ago. That's when I feel my age. Yeah. I'm like, damn, that was like 30 years ago. Um, but yeah, dude. So one question I had, which yeah. which was, I think someone I talked to someone about this, but were you still in Rival Mob when the the when the Revelation record? No, no, I was, I was, I was, I was way out of that by then. Yeah, like, okay. uh, it, I, like I, uh, I just was always like, how the fuck did these dudes no, get like, on fucking revelation? Cause like revelation wasn't even reco- releasing like hardcore records at that point. Yeah. They were re- re- just all weird shit. Uh, I mean, I, I, when, when the crossover from lads to rival mob, uh, we wrote like a bunch of, we wrote like a bunch of songs uh, and it was right around that time that I was like buying like my first condo and stuff like that. So like I wasn't on the recording. It was actually James Whittle who was the other guitarist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was just those four guys like just did the did the demo, and then James was actually like moving to Japan. So like the demo came out and like the band was kind of dead in the water, and like those dudes. I think it was actually like the same day that like brendan and pierce might have been like helping me move like into into my condo they had the demo or something I'm like oh yeah we did the demo and i listened to it and i was like oh this is pretty good and they're like <laughs> they're like yeah well james is moving away and i was like yeah they got already like quit the band yeah and i was like oh, i rejoin like play guitar so like so probably did maybe half a dozen shows maybe seven shows or so like that and then uh like like Things I guess kind of started picking up steam where like they were gonna do that first like LP on like locking out records. Uh I think it was locking out records. Yeah, whatever. Like raw life LP. So like they wrote the majority of that LP and uh I just wasn't into the songs, man. Like I wasn't like it, it was kinda like it, it felt like I kept in I was kept in the dark with a lot of the band stuff because I had like so much shit going on with like a new house and like work and everything like that. That like it was just kinda like one day like it felt like I just went to practice and they're like, hey, we're recording an LP. And it's like mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Like I don't really know any of the songs, so it's like I played really fucking bad on that, and like I definitely know I'm like way low in the mix, yeah, and yeah. like I quit the band like before like the that record even came out. So like that's where like my my rival mob experience just like ended. ended okay, you know yeah. what I mean. So it's like like I played badly. I like I wrote some good demo songs, didn't play on the demo. Like played really bad on the LP, 
And then left. And then left the band, <laughs> you know? And then those guys, like, those guys did a, b- a bunch of good traveling and, like, you yeah, know, like, yeah. and they, they got on Rev and, like. No, I was really proud of, of that, like, as, like, a New Bedford like, area band getting on Revelation. Like, yeah. for Revelation to come out of hardcore retirement and put put that out, I was like, what the fuck is it? That's crazy. Yeah, like, uh, you know, so, like, those guys, those guys did a lot of cool stuff. But, like, eventually, I guess those guys just got burnt out on sure, it, yeah. it, it also. And, uh, well, it um, seems like the cool thing is that a lot of the, a lot of dudes, you know, are, are into things for the right reason. So, like, bands bands need to know when to fucking break up, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's true. Like, because it's like one of those things where it's like, uh, if you're not feeling it anymore and you're just doing it for just like money or whatever glory you think you're gonna get, dude, you're gonna start writing some half ass fucking shit. And yeah. like, you know, like, why ruin your legacy, man? Just quit while you're on no, the fucking top. You know what I mean? Like, it's true. Very, 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 uh, very little bands. You know, once they've kind of got to that cross that line ever kind of get back some do some yeah do. some 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 bands some, some, some bands can fucking put out pull classic off. stuff and then there's a bunch of mediocre stuff in the middle and then they stop pulling some like fucking rad stuff out again but. yeah you know like and, and and i'm completely fine like as long as they still are playing with like that that intensity that like sure, yeah save a band only recorded like two solid lps and they're just playing off those two solid lps for fucking 30 years but they're still playing well Good. Oh, okay, I'm still fucking good with that. You because don't need if, to. You don't need to put out any more new material because no one wants to hear it. Half of no, it, half you know what I mean. And any, it's like most of the time, you know. So, I, but I don't know. Like, it's like a weird thing, dude. Like, we get hit up pretty regularly to like to do ITI shows, and I'm like, I'm a 38, I'm a 48 year old man, dude. Like, I don't want to do songs I wrote when I was like 15 and 16, and you know, it's like like if I do anything, I w- I'd rather do a War Machine show. Yeah. Because that's stuff we're doing now, and we don't get to play much because Everyone's, AF's, AF's yeah. on tour all the time and Slapshot tours a lot. And I mean, so like I'd rather do something like that and do yeah. some new stuff that's that's more interesting to me. And and now it's it's not it's not disres like not that I'm not don't like you know like where I came from. It's just more like that had its time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did it for the Infest show because and that sounded fucking great because they you know like it's in fest and, and they they asked for us to play you know yeah. whatever and it was like all right you know what i mean like yeah. or 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 uh you know or, you know or you know whatever and it's like there was like a history with us i, was, I used to be good friends with well yeah. and there was with that, Matt that, and that stuff. connection with like nemesis records and yeah, all and that, all that stuff, stuff. Like, yeah. yeah so you know there was like a connection to that and it was like all right that'll be a rad show to play but yeah like do i want to go play a basement show no <laughs> yeah and it, and, it, and you know what the thing is is we'll do it and i'm like well who am i to say no if people are really asking us to play like yeah i'll play because people want to see us and then half the people that were like you guys gotta play you guys gotta play they, they don't, don't show, up. show up so yeah. i'm like what the fuck dude like like yeah. i'm not doing this because you know there's no i don't get nothing out of it anymore you yeah. know what i mean i'm doing it for you guys and then you guys don't show up so fuck you you know what i mean and, and you know it's like i'm confident with like playing and stuff like that like even though i don't care much for playing live but you know something like dude there's a certain amount of fucking stress and like i don't want to say anxiety that goes oh, of with course, it, but dude. it's like it's like like some of those battle ruin shows that like we did like those shows and it's like you know, it's like we're, we worked hard because we want to sound good for ourselves. We don't want to fucking embarrass ourselves. Sure. But I mean, you know, if somebody's like, hey, we're flying in from Australia to see your band, you're like, hey, you're, you're like, like oh, shit. what the fuck? We got we to gotta do like, it good. You're yeah. flattered, but it's like, it's like, yo, you don't person let probably that, took let time that out of fucking work. Like, they're like, $1,000 plane ticket. Yeah, yeah, like, they're spending two grand to come see you. You want to put on a decent show. Yeah, you know, and it's like, like, luckily, like, all those. Australian dudes that like in and gals and stuff like that, they're all fucking awesome people. Like I'm yeah. fortunate that like, you know, it's, usually when I wake up for work, like I'm like chatting them up, you know what I mean? Yeah, Cause it's yeah. like, they're the only people that are like awake on the other side of the fucking world. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, it's weird. Like you know, I haven't been to Australia, but I know there's like a good, like underground music scene. And there's like a really good chopper scene. And like, we send a lot of parts really? and swag. Or, like I send packages to Australia. Like, on a weekly fucking basis, like, and I well, was like, I mean, they they don't have a winter, so I'm sure they're fucking they're riding, riding all, the time, all year yeah. round, you know. But like, uh, but everyone I know that's played shows in Australia talks about how rad Australia is, it, you know. Like the dozen or so Australians that I know, they have the same type of fucking humor as what Boston people do. All right, so it's that like probably explains it. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the fucking weather. <laughs> I don't know if it's just that they've jocked Boston bands so much that they've adapted our fucking humor. But like, they just like 
lowbrow, like they don't give a fuck about anything. Rough, like, and, rough and tumble. The, the gals, the guys, they yeah. they just they just love good shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's it's cool. Like, I don't know. It's probably just because like all their great aunts and uncles were like fucking horse thieves from yeah, fucking yeah, England, yeah. and they were like it's, penile. It's basically colony. it's just like it's <laughs> like a colony. it's a criminal colony that yeah, grew into know, a country. A, so yeah, so there's a little bit of a shitty gene that's going on. Yeah, <laughs> like so I, I don't know what it is, but like no offense, Australia. I say that with with yeah. utmost respect and 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 and, 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 and belovement, You know what I mean? But uh, no, I'll, I'll just straight up say there's shitty genes going down. Yeah, there, you know what I mean? But like, dude, they like. Shitty jeans makes for good humor. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like if you're already bottom of the barrel, that's where your humor is going to be. You're all right with me. But uh, yeah, I mean, Australia, man, fucking music wise, man, like dude from like 70s, like those bands, man, amazing hard rock bands. Oh, man. yeah. Like, fucking, I, mean, I, I mean, obviously the, then the elephant becomes in the room as these. Sucks that the, the Rose Tattoo show might dude, not happen. I'm that was going to be Rose Tattoo in New Bedford. Dude, I'm it, so fucking mad. <laughs> like, like. I know so many people that were fucking, there was people Dude, coming was, over here was, from all over the place to go I to was, that show. I was going to the LA show. Yeah. I was going to the fucking Brooklyn show. I was going to the Philly show and I was going to the New Bedford show. Like favorite fucking band ever. I yeah. love Rose Tattoo. And then all this shit happened. And like, yo man, I straight up got fucking racist, bro. I don't, I don't care. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Trump. I got, Good or bad, fucking bomb China, fucking they, <laughs> killing my chance to see Rose Tattoo. <laughs> fuck that country, communists, fucking <laughs> bat eating motherfuckers. Uh, yeah, fuck them all. Fuck their fucking wet markets. You know, like yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, I'm just like I'm like yeah, and like it's I, not really racist. It's it's more uh, xenophobic. Whatever, man. Whatever I, the I, word I, is, they, yeah. They can toss whatever topics they yeah. use, like you know, like, yeah, yeah. Goddamn people, like yeah. fucking like keeping me like I mean they haven't played the states since fucking 1982, man. Yeah, I you know, know like. But and what's the odds that they're gonna play in fucking New Bedford, dude? And it's like funny because like Paco was like got well, shows I, I, for the new I, for, got, got tickets for the New York. I was like, we could have just went to the New Bedford show. We said, what they're playing in New Bedford? And I'm like, yeah, dude, they're playing they, in New Bedford, fucking uh, recently. The only, th the only thing that I can assume is that they have like that's like it seems like a lot of like older bands. That's like yeah, they, they yeah. must have an in with that club. Like their yeah. booking agents like. Oh, well, like you know, fucking White Lion probably yeah, yeah. just fucking played. So yeah. it's like you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. like. It, yeah. And it sucks because UFO just played there like uh, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, they played on a Tuesday night, and like I love UFO, and I was like, tickets were forty bucks, and it was a Tuesday night. I'd have to take fucking Wednesday off out of work. Yeah, all this money, and I'm like <laughs> adult shit, and I'm like, uh, and it's UFO's last show. I've never seen them before, like last tour, and I'm like, I've never seen them before, and it's like maybe I should go, and I'm like, you know something. Be responsible. Make money for your family. Skip that show. You're gonna see Rose Tattoo in a couple of months. Yeah, you're gonna yeah, see a yeah. bunch of yeah, yeah, bunch yeah. of your favorite sh bands. Like yeah. you know, you're gonna go nuts. And then somebody made fucking bat soup, and now I can't fucking yeah. see Rose Tattoo. And it's like I saw the best meme. It was like whoever said one person can't change the world never ate a <laughs> never ate an undercooked bat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude. <laughs> like you know. All the horrible shit that's going like on like right now, nowadays, like, you know, like I'm sure people are going to be losing their homes. They're going to be fucking losing your businesses. I don't know. The, I, the thing is, is that too many people are affected that I don't think. I don't it, it, you know something? They got to work with you on shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, it, like, you know, something like nobody's credit cards are getting fucking paid these couple of months. No, man, no. You know, like, yeah. you know, but like. The one positive thing that's happened out of this is the meme game. Yo, it's been dude, off the hook, off the chain. I've dude. seen, I've seen that 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 big black guy's dick, bro. Oh my like, god, more than mine, bro. Like, <laughs> and, like, and I don't know if if that's a worldwide phenomenon, but that's been, I I swear, like in the last three years, I've got more like alerts and shit with a link. It's fucking. That I like, I look at every link now to make sure that it's coming from a credible <laughs> source. If someone sends me something, if I send you something, it's not credible at no, all. It's I that know. dude's dick. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I, I, I feel like, um, what's it? That guy, uh, Tosh.0 used to have a show. Yeah. I don't know if it's still on or not, but he used to do a thing called web redemptions where he'd like yeah. hunt down yep. internet. So he needs, to, him, him or someone needs to hunt that dude down. He's dead. And, oh, he's dead? He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> dude. So you've done some research. No, no, I had people do research for me in Australian as a matter yeah. of fact. But like, I, like I wake up every morning and like, I just got like my, like just but before, you, keep, before yeah. you go real quick, yeah. if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, then you have really dry or real fucking shitty friends yeah, or, or really good friends that care about you not seeing this fucking horrible fucking visual, Dude, um, like, but so, it's fucking hysterical. So, so like, 
Like I'll wake up every morning and like, dude, I woke up this morning. I might even send, did I send you the Jurassic Park one? No, I didn't get that I'll one. fucking send you it later on today. Right. But like I send it, like I got it sent to me and I'm just looking and I go, God, now I'm going to see this black guy's dick. And like, I just click it anyhow. Cause I'm like, I'm like, does somebody put a lot of time into this meme yeah. and I want to see it. Yeah. And I just start laughing hysterically. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, so anyhow, like. But they've been putting him up like everywhere now. Like, like, uh, like I saw like one where it was like, you know, those like games where you like put quarters in and there's like a, like a, uh, uh, hand that comes down and you claw? can win a prize. Yeah. yeah, it's the claw, but it was just all toilet paper, and then him sitting on top like, of all the toilet paper so, and the so claw machine. One, one of the ones that I saw this morning was uh, was a Jaws one. All right, <laughs> and it's like you know he's getting the, he's chumming the water, and it's like the first scene like in the movie when like you know like Bruce Jaws the shark pops out of the water, and he's like he's chumming the water. And then he's like, yeah, you don't want you sling some of this shit yourself. And then he turns around and it's just like a set of the shark popping up. It's just that dude with his big black dick fucking pop up. <laughs> and then he, he walks into the boat and he, he looks at like Robert Shine and goes, I think we're going to need a bigger boat. And it's like, I, like I, it, it, it's fucking hilarious. That's funny. But, but that dude, like, I guess like he's like, I don't know if he was like, he just used to pose for like gay pornography or if uh, he was like a like, porn star, a, a or, porn something. star or something like, I, like, I don't know that deep in it, but like. When I was told about this, I was just like, I don't know if you want to edit this shit out, but uh, I was just like, I was like, man, I was like, that's a, that's like a real double edged thing. Cause I'm like, part of me is like really happy that this dude is like into dudes because no, like no <laughs> man could like compete with this dude's fucking, this savage fucking club. This guy's, savage. I'm like, this dude's just like wrecking women. That's the like, next, that's the next way being savage, savage club. club. I'm like, this dude's just wrecking, like wrecking tail, like left and right. I was like, I can't compete with this dude. And then the other thought of me, I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm like, if this dude's a gay dude, like if I was in a room with this dude, there's n and he just wanted to take me. There's no way I could fight this dude off. Like I would just get completely raped. If, yeah, yeah. And I, and like in my mind, I'm just like I'm like I've been miserable all my life. Like I don't have enough of a happy place to go to, <laughs> or like I'm gonna to survive escape, this. Escape that. Yeah. And I'm just like, but I I mean you know re rest in peace. You know what I mean? Like I, I you know like fucking. That I I wish that guy was alive right now to uh to, to, reap, to, the, reap, to reap the benefits, the benefits yeah because shit, he's like know? a internet celebrity he, at this he point he is the face of the coronavirus he is dude it's, it's so awesome, fucking hysterical man, you know? like um and and I have a group group text with some friends and now anytime a link is set like you know you, everyone's like no nah, you're not getting me you're not getting me and now everyone's like looking at the link like looking at like the, the first uh, you know to see so, where it's coming so, from so this was fucking great okay uh you know Zach Sylvia he used to play guitar in Rampage. I probably by face, you know, all right. Yeah. So good buddy of mine, I bullshit with him all the time. So, uh, archeologist fucking like smart as a fucking whip, fucking great guy, him and his girlfriend, uh, they were in Greece. They went, they went to Greece like three or four days before, like all the lockdown shit happened, all this stuff happened. Okay. And then they, they got stuck over there for like, I don't know, like two weeks at an Airbnb and stuff like that. They eventually flied back over. Uh, and, uh, there was one of those early ones was the one that's like Trump infected with coronavirus. And yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like, Oh, I can't wait to send this to Zach. So <laughs> I sent it to Zach and I guess he was on like a fucking crowded <laughs> grease bus, like shoulder to shoulder <laughs> when he opened it. And he's just like, like, you know, I, I, I'm assuming people around him just saw him just like looking at this dude's fucking hog. <laughs> yeah. And he just, he's like, you're like, man, it's like, I shouldn't have opened that on a public bus. And I'm like, yeah, got the motherfucker. Yeah, man. dude. That's the whole thing. It's awesome. Like, it's, it's one of those things when you get somebody, you're so excited. Cause you're like, fuck yeah, dude, someone got me. I got you, dick. Yeah, I, you uh, fucking whatever. But, but uh, so rest assured, I am not talented enough. Like this is a very fly by night operation. I do not know how to edit shit. So everything's going, dude. There's, there's I, nothing. I, 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 I don't. I hit, I hit record and we go. And I then, don't really give a shit. Yeah, man. no, I know. I you know. know like, no, I know. But uh, the, the, I tell everyone, I was like, I'm only, all I know how to do is uh, I can, I can edit the dead air off the beginning and yeah. the end of the episode like so that it's you know like it starts that's, right at the beep or whatever that's, but that's that, that's all i know how to do it you can you can put a link at the bottom of <laughs> you know this episode to my email and just people can just send whatever sort of hate mail they I want straight to me no i think uh i think, I think sorry I don't, has it been pretty positive it's been so pretty i don't know if it's been pretty positive but i don't think it's been particularly offensive uh, people get offended or, or, over stupid shit. Nowadays. I don't think it's been super incendiary yet. You know, it's funny because like, I'm not trying to goad you into it. I'm just saying. I mean, you, you can you, goad you, me into <laughs> it if you want. But I, I mean, it was funny because like going into this when you're like, like I was like, I was like, man, I was like, I always wanted to kind of be like on a podcast, like, and it's like, it's like, oh, Josh's podcast is fucking awesome. And then when you invited me and like, and I've I've listened to every episode, I'm like, 
man, all these guys sound like really good natured, like positive <laughs> guys. And I'm like, oh, you're, you're kind of a piece of shit. And it's like, man, it's like, God, I hope Josh can use this one. You know, it's yeah. like, nah, nah. I mean, like, I think every, like, like I said, like, uh, with Packer, when we got hammered, like, I don't, th- or maybe I've said it in conversations afterwards, like, yeah. I don't think my reach is out into the mainstream with, where there would be actually people that would listen to this and be offended by it. I think like I'm pretty tight, tightly knit into the subculture worlds. Like I don't, I don't think I got many like, you know, uh, Becky's who asked for store managers listening to this. You you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not like all of a sudden, like people are going to like have a boycott with Chopperhead because you had me on the podcast. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I think anyone that's listening, if if you're listening to this and and you, you know, unless this is your first episode and you just kind of stumbled upon it, like you pretty much know what you're going to get. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're, we're, and it's it's something that we said earlier too. Like, there's a lot of people that you said like the quote unquote the word white knights that are virtue signaling and social yeah. peacocking. Usually, those people are compensating for something, and the worst pieces of shit out there. Oh, Us, 100%. we can we can we can have the most un PC like joke around sessions. Yeah, and you know, but at the same time, like I'm the dude. You drop your wallet in front of me, I'm picking it up and giving it to you. Or be like, hey man, you just dropped twenty bucks. Yeah, like I'm not gonna fucking. Do some low, yeah. low, low, like grimy shit. Like yeah. I, I don't need to do grimy shit. You know, like, you like, know what I mean? Like I, it's not in my nature anyway. You know? You know, I, I, I've definitely been known to like not have any sort of like governor filter, filter at all. Yeah. And it's like, well, like I, I think I'm like a pretty morally sound person. Like, yeah. But uh, dude, it's fun to piss people off. Oh, man. it is. It is. And, and it's like, and it's it, easy. It, oh, it's so people are triggered. Dude, and like the world has like a fucking half ounce fucking trigger. Th- like you can breathe heavy and it fucking triggers somebody, dude. Yeah. Like, like you fired that shot, man, and it's it, fucking crazy. It, but you know something? That I I think like in in maybe my own warped mind, like like you're actually doing some of these people like a favor. Yeah, like, giving them some shine or something. Well, it's it's like you know something like like even even with all this shit that's going on, like you know what I mean? Like, uh, life is still pretty fucking easy in this country you know what i mean I, like, people don't know how good they have it and yeah. i know there's gonna be people like, oh, well, you, you're saying that because you're from, coming from a place of privilege and blah 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 and I'm like, i ain't coming from a place of privilege for one and i work and struggle like yeah. everybody everyone thinks oh like oh you got you got a business this or that and i'm like no dude like like i go months like sometimes in the winter without drawing a paycheck from yeah. this and i gotta survive by other yeah. means but but the, the the thing is is not for everybody yeah but for the most part, being poor in America, yeah. you still have it better <laughs> oh, yeah. than a lot yeah. of people in a lot of other countries. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it's like, you know, like, you know, oh, so you should be happy with your lot in life. But I'm just saying people are quick to complain, but people aren't quick to appreciate what they actually have. Oh, and and if just, you can be pissed off yeah. over words, then your life is pretty fucking easy because yeah. some people have to worry about getting clean water to drink that well, fucking I was, day. I was just going to say, I was like, you know something? You live in a country where you can walk over to the sink and you're going to drink water that's not going to give you dysentery. Unless like, you live in Michigan. Flint, sure Michigan. Them, yeah. but, but that aside. <laughs> that aside. Yeah, but listen, America's a real big country. We got to <laughs> yeah. write off Michigan just because of that dirty water. Okay. You know something? They still have toilets where they can shit in, in, and in, it goes in, away in, in water that other countries wish they could fucking drink. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, we're, we're not shitting in holes. You know what I mean? And it's like, or, or, still- or shitting in a pot and throwing it into the water that streams down the fucking in front of the street into the, the, the public sewers, in, into the wet market, that you're into the wet market, the bat, the bat. <laughs> <laughs> into the, into the Corona infested bat that you're not going to cook enough. <laughs> Just kidding. Going down a rabbit hole there, a wormhole there. Yeah. But yeah, man, like I, 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 uh, I didn't get even to the basic question with you yet. Like, um, Do you, know, you got your prepared questions? <laughs> no, I don't have prepared questions, right. but I usually ask people history. Like what got you into like, how did you even find punk or hardcore or oi and that stuff? Like uh, what, 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 what was the path that led you into that in, in the first place? Uh, well, I mean like even before that, like just music in general, like, yeah. uh, I guess it kind of came Wow, this like because it was weird because I was thinking about this like, like the first band that I was ever like super into and still love them to this day is Queen. Okay, I fucking love Queen, and I think I love Queen because like for some strange reason like my dad was like, war movie guy like, John Wayne guy all this stuff, but for some strange reason he loved the Flash Gordon movie. Yeah. And, uh, which is like, just, just weird. Like, you know, which uh, you may remember that I made a reference to that on the first one when I was saying, 
going into the bag of mystery nips oh, was like yeah, going into the, yeah, the yeah, wood yeah. thing and flash, flash forward. And- right. <laughs> so like Queen, like, you know, like Brian did the May soundtrack, did the soundtrack. Yeah. So like, I remember like just being obsessed with that. And I remember I had a fifth grade teacher that like, she made me like a queen tape and it was pretty, she probably just recorded like a fucking best of queen tape. I, like, I, I still wish I had that tape. Miss Tori's like, if you're out there, I love you. You've, you've, you've made me a musician in some strange way. But like, I, I was into queen, like, and I got older, like, you know, like just like just seventies rock stuff, like, you know, sure, like Black yeah. Sabbath, like, you know, like cheap trick, like Aerosmith, yeah. love Aerosmith. Those first five albums, like America's Rolling Stones, I mean, fucking love it. But like, you know, I got into like middle school and like, you know, like you just, you're like searching for something. And there was like, you know, when I was in middle school, like, like eighth grade or so like that, kind of like, kind of getting into like, you know, maybe like seventh, eighth grade or something like that. Like that was when like, kind of like grunge stuff, kind of alternative music was kind of, and it's like, you're, you're kind of listening to that and you're like, Oh, it's kind of heavy. Like it's kind of like, but it's not, it's not what you're searching for. Sure. You know what I mean? And then it was like, that's when like, you know, like, Bands like Green Day or Rancid kind of like started popping that like that's something you're like, well, this is kind of good, but it's not really what I'm looking for yet. Yeah. And then like I got into like high school in art class, there was this kid, Adam Purrier, who probably had just started discovering like punk and stuff like that, maybe like a few months before. And apparently he had like a cousin in Minneapolis who would just make him like mixtapes. And like, he kind of saw that I was into like, at this point I had already kind of like started getting into like, you know, like the classic punk. So it was like Ramones, Sex Pistols, Dead Boys, sure. everything that everybody starts with, you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah. But you know, he was like, he had like these weird mixtapes and it, dude, it could be anything from like Descendants to like Discharge like on it. Yeah. And he would like make copies of the tapes and you're like, what the fuck is this stuff? Yeah, yeah. And then it's kind of like, you know, you're like, you're like a little kid and like your parent like didn't really give you a ride. So, I mean, it's like, it's like, where are there local music stores that I could like try to find whatever this stuff is? Yeah. And it's like, the mystery so, of it was fucking awesome. I, dude, I've been chasing those feelings forever. So, I yeah. mean, it was like, you know, like it was like words of music in Fairhaven. Yeah. Like you'd go there and you're like, what's this? You know, and it's like, you're kind of finding this. And then you're like, oh, there's like this store in like Warwick, Rhode Island, Newberry comics. And it was like the closest one to like, yeah, Dartmouth, yeah. New Bedford. so like when we, somebody had like a, like a license, we would go over there and just like, buy records or buy like CDs and stuff like that. And you're just like, you know, you just find stuff. And like, it was anything that would like kind of remotely look like it wouldn't be like something popular. So you'd like get a black flag record or you'd be like, you'd be like, Oh, what's this? Like condemned 84. And you're like, Oh, this looks like, this looks real tough. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, what yeah. is this? You know? And it's like, and then like, so it was kind of like that. And it's like, I kind of got into everything almost at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and then it was like, like a lot of like punk, like old UK punk and like street punk stuff, like a lot of early American hardcore and like oi stuff. And then like, I remember like going to like New Bedford shows and there was like older dudes like you and like Shane and stuff like that. And like, you know, and I remember like a dude like, you know, Andrew Bequita, like yeah. Andrew Bequita and those dudes, like they were like, like, oh yeah, these dudes are into like hardcore. And they like told me about like all like the early boss and stuff and like everything on Tang. So it's like, so now I had to buy everything that was on fucking Tang. And then they were also like, yeah, we're really into like Iron Maiden. And it's like, okay, like, yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. maybe I should be into Iron Maiden. And then you <laughs> yeah. listen to it and you go, this isn't what I was expecting, but this is kind of cool. And then like, you know, so it's like, yeah, I just got into everything kind of at the same time. Sure. And it's like, uh, I'm, like, I'm real happy that it wasn't like, I wasn't pigeonholed from like an early age where it's like, I only listen to this type of punk. Yeah. yeah I won't listen yeah. to metal. Yeah. Cause yeah. like, I think it's like made me like, is, as I said earlier in the podcast, like, I think I'm a shitty guitarist, but like, it's made me like more of like a, a well-rounded like musician where I'm sure. like, you know, it's like, I can listen to like old, like glam seventies shit, but I could also listen to, uh, I don't know if I can negative approach or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, but, but it's true. And it's a lot of people that I know that are actually play music yeah. rather than just listen to it. Don't aren't as pigeonholed and like a lot of different types of music. Yeah. Like, like I'll listen to fucking septic death. Yeah. And then I'll go listen to fucking book of T and the MGs and I'll be perfectly happy with that. Yeah. And the transition is seamless to me and it's not striking or harsh. It, co- it completely and, makes sense. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I like different shit for different reasons. You yeah. know what I mean? And and, 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 uh, and I find that a lot of people um, that are musicians are more apt to do. And you know, and yeah. as much, you know, I, I, I'm not 
coming down on myself or anybody, but the, you know, I do know some really talented players, but yeah. so, sometimes a hardcore musician, like I think of myself being 16 was like trying to write ITI <laughs> songs in my bedroom. Like, like I wouldn't call that a musician, but people that actually love music enough to try and play it and create yeah. it yeah. usually have an appreciation for it, more types of, uh, uh, of genres it, or, or variations. It, of music. It's funny. Cause I was like, uh, I'm I'm into the idea of starting like a lot of just demo bands now. Like yeah. I don't want to play shows. I just want to like record five songs with friends and yeah. just fucking float it out there, and then that's it. Like, so I'm I'm, I'm starting this demo band with uh, Pierce and my buddy Matt and this other dude uh, Julian from overseas, and uh, we just want to just like start just like just a real like knuckle dragging like slower mid than mid pace like almost painful to listen to like just oi band. Like yeah, yeah. stuff that sounds like indecent exposure, like the UK straw dogs, like battle zone, like just real, like stupid, like real <laughs> simple music, like no fucking solos. Like just like, yeah, yeah. 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 Plotting stuff like stuff that is not like contemporary fucking oi. Cause all contemporary oi is basically just middle-aged dudes with fucking Fred Perry's who are basically playing pop punk. Uh, but like, so like, we're we're like we're at practice last night and like we're like writing these songs and like showing each other songs stuff like that and like we're talking just about what you were saying and we're like we're like man like it was so much easier writing like dumb music when we were like fifteen and sixteen years old and like you don't know how to play your fucking instrument yeah and it's like and that's, that's all you that's, could write yeah and it's like some of the some of the best bands whether it's you know oi bands or hardcore bands or punk bands or whatever it is it's like the best songs that you fucking write are the songs when you don't know how to play your fucking yeah, instrument because yeah. it's like it just comes from like a stupid primal like primal guttural yeah fucking it's like thing. it's like okay this sounds good let's just like really play fast or like yeah. you know like you don't know anything about chord progression but like there's like there's like a magic in that yeah. and it's like now you're like, breaking rules yeah and it's like because now you don't know any better now we're trying to play stuff and i'm like oh man i'm fucking i gotta dumb this down like i'm overplaying this i'm like throwing like like thin lizzy riffs yeah yeah shit. yeah, yeah. Like, fuck man it's like you know it's yeah like, no there's a beauty to it like because there's a there's a simpleness but like a a, a, a i don't know like a true kind of uh, nature to it, I guess. Uh, yeah. You know, authentic. It's just, it's coming from the heart. It's not coming from any kind of mastering of an instrument. It's just like, this is, you're channeling something, but you, you're not polished enough to, to, to put like a overproduce it. Yeah. And I think, I think as far as like music also, like, I think like the beginning, like, unless like you're, you're you want to make it a career and you're willing to struggle and like reap the benefits of like making it a career and be like a touring band and stuff like that. Like, like for like somebody like of my caliber, or even like your caliber, like, you know, who, who like dips their fingers in like music and stuff like that. Like you start it and you end it hopefully the same way. Like you start it because you just want an excuse to fuck off with your friends yeah, and then you end it because you just want to run away from the wife and kids. And I'm like, like a weekend night, a weekday night. And like, you just want to like fuck off with your friends. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and it's like, you probably make like the, the worst time of music is probably in between that when you're like, Oh, well like we got to play some shows and like, you know, yeah. like, you know, it's like, uh, honestly for me, like the other thing to it is that I don't know what it is. Like there's a drive to do it because it is, I, for a vocalist at least and I know for, for for players too but it's it's um therapeutic yeah in a way you know what I mean and like you know 48 I'm still antisocial and and got some anger and shit and I don't you know like it's 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 channeling and and you know it feels therapeutic to do you know what I mean like I like I don't get anything out of doing American War Machine it's actually a really big fucking inconvenience <laughs> but there's a drive to do it and yeah. I don't know 100% what the drive is and then I get really mad when we can't do shit sometimes yeah. and it's not there's no glory it's like I know you know when I'm never gonna live and sustain off of it yeah but I'm like fuck I need to do I need to fucking do it you know what I mean I like even a practice or something it, you know it's a, it's a really bizarre thing there's like a drive to do it and I, I don't know exactly what that is you ever get into fishing no and I and I won't dude like uh, I will go fucking stir crazy I went fishing like twice with my father when was the last time you went fishing when, when I was a kid and, okay well and, you're not a kid anymore I know. listen at this age man <laughs> it makes fucking sense. And as much as I'm mediocre with everything else in my life, I am fucking mediocre at it. <laughs> I don't catch shit, 
But there's something magical, especially with like. But I see it become obsession for a lot of dudes. Like my <sighs> boy CJ is so fucking obsessed with fishing, and like he goes to like Mexico, like on like cartel land, and like fucking see, fishes that's, in that's, this like pond for like two weeks out there. That's that's next level. But like, yeah. like my my fishing is like sometimes with a canoe, sometimes with waders, sometimes not. Maybe with another buddy. Like you just go to a pond. And you just stand by the pond and maybe you have like, you buy some like shitty fucking beer, like, <laughs> like Coors or something like that. Or yeah. Miller. Miller's a good shitty fucking beer. Fishing, fishing beer, beer, you know, and you just throw it out. You should present that to them as a marketing campaign. And, yeah. And you, and you just bring it back and you just throw it out and then you catch something, you'll catch like a pickerel and you're like, this fucking thing, I got to take this thing off the fucking, off the rig, yeah. you know, and it sucks. <laughs> fishing, like catching the fish is almost the worst part of fishing. <laughs> and it's like that, that it, it didn't make sense to you when you were a kid, but as an older gentleman. I don't know. Like, I really like, I, I think I'd go fucking nuts, dude. Like, dude, I, and I go fishing on the edge of the Bridgewater Triangle, bro. Well, well, that's different. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, I go, won't go fishing. Like, I'll go hunting puck wedgies and well, that type of shit. I, we, we can have conversations, but I, yeah. I'll go fishing in Bridgewater, like <laughs> Lake Nip. And like, you know, I'm out there with the canoe and I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to get abducted by fucking UFOs. <laughs> or I'm going to see like some like Indian, ghost Indians fucking roll yeah, by yeah, on their yeah, canoe. Man. And like, you know, like working the land guys, you know, like. So have you seen anything weird out there? No, unfortunately not, man. No. I, I think it's one of those things where it's like if you're looking for it, you're, you're never going to fucking see it. I can tell you one thing that's happened to me here. Yeah. And well, it, at, at the shop? No, no, no. Um, coming home late one night, Yeah. and I was coming, um, coming through Freetown, through the forest area, yep. and there's an area called Chase Road, yep. and there's a, a lot of old farms, yep. and there's like an old cemetery and yep. whatnot. And I was literally driving, and I it's got to be like three in the morning or something, two yeah. three in the morning. No one else on the road, no one yeah. around. Like, there's no street lights, there's no like lamps that are, anything's reflecting off. And like two fucking weird twirling orbs like flew right in front and oh, passed my crazy. passed my window of my truck. Yeah. I like stopped. And I was like, "What the fuck was that?" And I was like looking around, and I was yeah. like, "Shut off all my lights to see if there was any lights or any yeah. weird shit that could be reflecting." And I saw nothing. And uh, that's the only weird thing that's, See, that's, that's that, happened to that, me. That, that, but it was nothing like like fucking out of control. But yeah. it was like two weird like orbs spinning around each other, and they I, have you and they seen, they it, flew right past if, my windshield. If you go online, if you go on YouTube, there is like this weird phenomenon where it's like trapped balls of like lightning, like thunder and lightning. Yeah. And there, there was one that I saw not that long ago, and it's like, dude, it's a glowing ball of lightning, and it like it was going over like a railroad crossing, and yeah. it's like. Weird it could have been something weird like that. Shit like yeah, that I don't exists. know. But I mean, like you know, I'm a sucker for believing in like weird yeah. supernatural shit too, man. Like I, I mean, like we it, live, but we, it was right and kind of not to we, we not live, to put more context a, yeah, on it. Yeah. But it was right near where that cemetery is, which is awesome. But so, so the thing about it is, is like I don't know what it is. I don't whatever. But yeah. that's just like, the only thing weird thing I've seen in the Freetown area. Like, like I've had like weird like experiences. Nothing that's like. You know, nothing that, like, stuff that can, like, kind of be explained, but not really be explained. Like, yeah. I mean, like, like, the part of Dartmouth that I grew up in was, like, South Dartmouth. And, like, it, like it, I've always been, like, obsessed with, like, occult stuff, like, sure. paranormal stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, an October birth. So, I mean, like, all that stuff, like, reminds me of being, like, a little kid. Like, born five days before Halloween. Like, that reminds me of, like, hey, my birthday. There's, like, horror movies. <laughs> Weird shit. TV. Yeah, yeah. Weird shit. Like, I've always been obsessed with that. Which is why you collect horror posters and movies. Yeah, and all exactly. That shit. You know, like, I've, I've always been an outcast. So, like, you know, uh, so I've always been into, like, reading, like, you know, books about stuff like that. Especially any sort of, like, local fucked up history and stuff yeah. like that. And it's, like, you get into stuff like, you know, King Philip's War and everything like that. Which, I mean, that was, like, all through southern Massachusetts. Like, into Rhode Island and stuff like that. Like, tons of battles. Tons of, like deaths and stuff like that sure. on like, you know, you know, you know, so, uh, uh, South Dartmouth where I grew up, I used to have a buddy that lived on like the Westport line next to the Duvall's store, you know, Duvall's store. Yep. All right. So like, I remember I was driving to, and Duvall's store, I think it's, if it's not the oldest, it's one of the oldest still like running general stores in America. And, uh, I did not know that. I, I knew it was old, but I didn't know it was one of the old. oldest it's, in, the, it's, in the country. It's really, really old. Uh, and I remember like driving like, my car, like to my buddy Jared's house, like, you know, driving by it. And like the thought just, I was driving alone and the thought just popped in my mind. I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm like, you know, like, I know, like, I think this area got like, like, 
pillaged and like there was like some battles like during like like King Philip's War era and stuff like that. I know Dartmouth got attacked. I'm like, like wow, this is like probably like there's a lot, like a lot of old settlers homes. Like this is just thoughts that I'm thinking. And I'm like, I bet there's a lot of weird supernatural stuff around here. And as soon as that thought popped into my mind, the wheel jerked completely out of my hand. Like it jerked out of my hand to the point where like I'm in the extra, I'm in the the next lane over. Like <laughs> completely, like I'm sure like goofing around with your friends when you were a kid, like you would have somebody that would occasionally grab the wheel and like, yeah, know, yeah, sure, like, what sure. the fuck are you doing? Like that was what like it was. It, like it pulled the wheel out of my hand. So like my car like went into the next lane and there was no other car there, but it's like, I had that thought. I was like, but there's a lot of supernatural activity. And like instantly the car's in the next lane. Like the wheel was pulled out of my sure. hands. I get out of the car. I'm like, okay, I hit a pothole or something like that. There must be a pothole in, in the street. Like something jerked, no pothole in the street. I'm like, Okay, ice? No, it's like spring day, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like I've had things like that happen where it's sure. like it's like okay, gonna get back into my car. Car drove fine. Went to my buddy's house, and it's like okay, that's just like one of those weird things that just just happened. Just happened. So could it have been a completely mechanical thing, or it could have been fucking something weird. Never happened again. I mean, there's been times where like you know, uh, you know, where it's like things like we had. Like growing up, we had a dog that we we ended up like like putting down, like because she got old, you know, family dog, and like you know for like a week or two, like there was like the morning routine where like I'd get up for work or something like that, or get up for school, and like the dog would be like uh, crated in the kitchen. So you let the dog out from the sliding glass door as the dog goes take a piss or shit, whatever, and the dog comes back in. You give the dog fucking cookie, you drink your coffee, you fucking go to work. You know, same thing. Like my sister would have the same routine when she was living with us, and like. You know, we put the dog to sleep and, you know, we got rid of all the dog stuff, but there would be times where like, you know, like you're making your coffee in the morning and you're, you're clinking your, your mug with, you know, like mixing the milk in and stuff like that. And you kind of like look and like, you're like, is that a dog? Like, you know, like you kind of see like the silhouette of like a dog waiting sure. at the sliding glass doors. Um, and my sister was like, yeah, like I saw the dog like on the porch. Like, you know, it's that's like, crazy. Yeah. It's like weird shit like that. Like, yeah. And you don't I, know if that's something psycho, like. Not psychosomatic, routine, but like, something in your head, yeah, or if but, it's uh, uh, you, know, you know. And there's uh, there's been other things. Everybody's got like those weird stories. I mean, sure. and and it's funny because like you could even like talk to like a coworker or like some random dude on the street and be like, "Do you believe in ghosts or like anything?" They'll be like, "No, not at all." But they'll be like, "Well, I had this one time." Everybody's yeah. Got everyone, a yeah, story. yeah, almost, yeah, you know for I the mean? most like, part, yeah, yeah. And and it, it just could be some random, it, yeah. And, and it just so happens that like we almost live in like a weird like Twin Peaks, like Southern Massachusetts, like vortex of like strangeness like yeah I'm, I'm not sure if you ever got around to seeing like that bridgewater triangle doctor i did I, I have seen it yeah so interesting uh and uh my buddy cam uh he sings for like this uh this oi band down in new york the stance he's originally from from bridgewater he's got some fucking amazing stories from bridgewater like he I, and i'll send you the footage of like some ufo shit that he saw yeah. Which over Bridgewater, which it's like documented that there was like, yeah, there was like this like large, like mile long UFO, like above Bridgewater, like highway, like, and it's like YouTube footage of some guy filming it, yeah. but it, he took the footage. He didn't take it, but he oh. saw it. And then like, it, like he saw it and like, he told like a bunch of people, like him and his buddy saw it. And like, he told like a bunch of people and like, nobody fucking believed them. Like, I think he even told his folks, like his folks didn't believe him. And then like a month later, like it showed up on some sort of like Bridgewater, like community Facebook thing. Like, look at this UFO that's like in the sky. And everybody's like, holy shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. You that's know? crazy. But he tells this story that like, uh, you know, I'm sure you saw in the Bridgewater Triangle thing that they were talking about, like, you know, like Thunderbirds. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So he tells this story that growing up in Bridgewater, like, you know, I guess some kid down the street was like, hey, like, come on over to my house. Like, they're like, t like nine, ten years old. Like, come on over to my house. Like, you know, like I'm playing basketball or some shit like that. So he goes over to his buddy's house. He goes in the backyard. His buddy's nowhere to be found. Like, so he's like, kind of like, you know, okay, like, where's, where's this dude? And like, he kind of like walks up his buddy's like back deck and like the kid's like, in the house, like hysterically crying to like his mom. And like at nine years old, 10 years old, the last thing you want to be seen is like crying in front of your buddy. Sure, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So like, apparently like, like between that phone call of Cam getting invited to go play basketball in this kid's fucking backyard, like I guess the kid was playing basketball and he just like looked up and it was like a fucking pterodactyl in his fucking like backyard. <laughs> and just like, <laughs> <laughs> with like fucking wings and just like skyrocket out. And like the kid just like fucking freaked, freaked out. out. And yeah. it was like, 
And like, it's funny because like I turned Cam onto like that, the Bridgewater Triangle documentary and he hadn't thought about that, Any of that incident. Shit? Yeah. For years. And then when he saw the part about like Thunderbirds, like these weird yeah. Thunderbirds like that have been seen in Bridgewater, he's like, holy shit, like I got a story about this. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's just, we live I know. in a weird I, place. I man. wish I could see some cool shit. It's just, I think I want to see shit too much that I, I don't get to see it. I, I fish, uh, on uh, I fish at this uh, place like uh, Lake Nip that's in Bridgewater. It's like pretty much right off of 495. And the reason why I fish there is there's like an island in the middle, all yeah. right? And supposedly like in the 60s and 70s, there was like some cult activity and like people were like murdered on the island. Okay. And like, but there's like, like a, the Freetown Forest too. Like yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah. A couple yeah. out there. Uh, but there's also like a little stretch of beach that like, so I would like, I like I would just go like on like, weird like Bridgewater Triangle fishing spots and like there was like the story that I found that this guy was like yeah like by Lake Nip this like one sandy part like we used to go there and like shoot 22s and like I got chased out by a demon like you know what? <laughs> and I was like that's where I'm gonna, I'm gonna start go. fucking fishing right? yeah, yeah, I wanna start fishing. and it was funny because like there was one time where like uh I was driving around uh like Lake Nip and I was like kind of looking for a good access point like something that I hadn't fished before and uh it was actually even like more like towards like uh, uh, the swamp there. It, it like alcohol is getting to me. I can't remember the name of the swamp there. The uh, Huckamonk Swamp. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm driving. Out, I'm looking for a good access point that I can like bring my canoe over there. And I see like a cop just like just on duty, just hanging out there. So I like pull up to him. I'm like, I'm like, hey, uh, officer, you know, like looking for some good fishing spots like in the area. Like, is there like an access point? He's like, oh, he like the guy was a, a fisherman also. So he kind of told, told me some good spots. And then I'm like, what about like, uh, does like, you know, does this drain into like Lake Nip? And he's like, he's like, oh yeah, like go through there. And so like kind of, you know, and then like he even told me, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, don't go on that Island though. And I'm like, why? What's up with that? Island? he goes, I discovered a lot of bodies on that island. At one point. And I'm like, <laughs> in, in my, like I instantly just get like a hard on. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I got to go fishing next to that well, island. Have you dude. gone on the island? No, no. Yeah, uh, like, you, you know, something like I'm not, <laughs> you scared. don't want to destroy the mystique of it. That too. But like, you know something, man, I'm, I'm, I'm not scared of Bigfoot, big feetsman. I'm not yeah. scared of fucking Thunderbirds. I'm petrified of ticks, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm like, no, you know something? It. Coronavirus, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll drink a cup of coronavirus. Yeah. Lyme disease do, do not scares want. the shit out yeah, of me. Yeah, no, bro. that, and that's, you know, that's, you know, it's weird because we're so accustomed to Lyme disease, but that's not something the whole country really knows about yet. You know uh, what I mean? Like, you it, know something? I, I, I think it's, I think it's pretty fucking big in the, uh, in, on the West Coast, Midwest, man. Like, Some places, yeah. You know, but it's like, I wish I could move to a continent that doesn't have ticks. ticks. Yeah, fuck those little motherfuckers, dude. Uh, little fucking parasite. Remember, remember, well, it was definitely when I Them was a kid. mosquitoes, dude. It was fuck. definitely when I was a kid. Remember when they would like spray for like, like West, I think it was like West Nile virus. Well, they would spray for mosquitoes. They would spray for mosquitoes because of West Nile virus. They always have always since I was a kid sprayed but, for mosquitoes. But, but they used to like, they used to spray with planes. Do you remember that? Because I, I kind of yeah. Because yeah. I remember, I remember when I was a little kid, there would be like times when you know you little kid, you're playing in the woods in Dartmouth. Like I remember there was like certain days where my mom's like, you can't go out and play in the woods because they're spraying for mosquitoes or West Nile virus. Yeah, yeah, no, and you'd have and, to keep your windows shut. Yeah, and, all that. and they yeah. stopped doing that because like it affected like eagles. And yeah, oh, yeah, some, yeah, like some all kinds you know, of crazy some, shit. Yeah, fuck eagles, man. Like <laughs> spray, <laughs> spray chemicals. I I want. I want chemtrails all over the fucking place. <laughs> like, get rid of ticks, kill all the deer. Yeah. I'm fucking fine with it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's weird too, because like uh deer can be um, like a nuisance. Like it gets to a point where you have to, like they have to like oh, yeah. let more hunting happen to just to control the population. Otherwise they'll decimate everything. You yeah. know, I, I, I'm always saying like, and I, I tell my wife this, I'm like, I'm like five year plan. I want to learn how to hunt. I'm going to kill deer, you know, like, provide food for the family, like real scratch, some like caveman savage. Sure, yeah. But in my mind, like I'll talk to like dudes that like I work with who are like hunters and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you guys hunt. Like, I, you know, I'm watching like hunting videos with them. And like I'm getting like tips. I'm like, what do you guys do about like ticks? And they're like, oh, we get tons of ticks. on. I'm like, ah, yeah, I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, I'm out. I'm I, out. I, I guess so like, you know, like, like, do they just like, after you kill the deer, do they just like fall off? And they're like, oh no, like, you know, you get like a bunch of ticks on you. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell my wife I'm like I've been telling her like yeah five year plan I'm gonna learn how to hunt but you like could always, I've been telling her that for like ten years yeah, now yeah, I just yeah, keep yeah, pushing yeah, it yeah. back. You could you could just wrap it up in a in a in a top and then bring it to a to someone to to process it for you. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, like like you know, it's funny because like when when 
gyms were open and existed like and i had like two weeks ago yeah two weeks ago <laughs> a week when, and a half ago. when i would have like you know when i would be doing maybe like my 10 minutes of cardio you know yeah. like if i would hit the weights like i got obsessed with watching like hunting videos so i'm like i'm like you know i'm like doing like the elliptical and stuff like that and i'm just watching like rednecks just fucking gut deers and there's like this like you know some <laughs> some mom over there like like looking like oh like here's a fucking serial killer just watching yeah. like you well, know Endless amounts of dudes just yeah. like field dressing deers, and it's yeah. like you know, dude. The the funniest thing like that um, is the area I was just talking about with some farms on Chase Road in Freetown. Yeah, there's one area where these these this family they'll they'll get their deer, yeah. and they're they're strung up from a tree like literally Ed Gein type shit, five man. feet from the road. Yeah, and I love it so much. Yeah. N I'm not celebrating the death of a deer. Yeah. Uh, they're providing food for their family. Uh, that, completely natural. Completely natural. Yeah. But what I love about it is that these yuppie fuckers move in, and you know they're driving by with their kids, so and they kidding. just see some motherfucking deer get gutted like yeah. 10 feet from yeah. them on the fucking road. That's fucking reality, motherfucker. Yeah, I, I, that is how people survived I for thousands that. and thousands of fucking years. I, and I, guess what? That's, you know. You want to go to your grocery store and buy like your nice packaged meat. That's the fucking reality. Now, with that said, I am hundred percent more for that than I like than I am for factory farming. Yeah, and, uh, that's fucking horrible, fucking gross. Yeah, fucking bad stuff. Like, yeah. but if you've hunted your own food and you're processing it and you're doing it naturally, I'm hundred percent for yeah. that, man. And and I do wish I had the time to to actually learn and and, and go hunting as well. Yeah, I mean, like that's definitely like I think I would have to like if I got over my fear of ticks. I'll probably have to do a lot of mushrooms to get over my <laughs> But, like, if I can get over my fear of ticks and, like, probably, like, all right, Joe, no more fucking buying posters. No more fucking music. You are a hunter. You're going to dedicate yourself to this. Yeah. I could probably pull it off. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's, like, uh, I just don't have enough fucking time for it, man. No, like, that's and, it. And, 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 like, you know, we, like, the whole factory farm thing, like, I'll buy factory farm feet once it once in a great while, man, because it's just like it's like, eh, you know, like fucking here's some fucking London broil that's like two dollars. Like, yeah, yeah, I ain't yeah, gonna yeah. turn this up, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. But it's like my wife is like a Vermonter. Okay. And her fa her family are like all like hunters, all farmers and stuff like that. And uh her uh her mom and dad, like they they've always bought like a cow like every year. Like so, there's a place literally right yeah. up the road that does that. But you can also buy individual steaks and stuff, yeah. but it's, it's all natural grass fed. So, so they, they buy a cow and they get it like slaughtered like every year and stuff like that. So they always have like, and like they've done that since like my wife and like her, uh, her sister were like little girls. Yeah, yeah. Now that they're adults and they, they moved out. It's just, it's just, you know, my in-laws just there. So, I mean, they have an overabundance of, you know, different cuts of meat. Sure. And it's like, so it's like once a month, like, like my mother in law will come down and just like fill our coolers. Yeah. So I mean, like we have like nice like grass fed like farm raised like local Vermont cows. You know, like yeah. and, you know, and it's like no. so like you know like we you you pick and choose your battles like you sure. know like like how we talked in the beginning of this podcast like you know like if my wife occasionally goes to like the Providence Farmers Market and she'll buy something from like the Simmons Farm you know like yeah you're happy about that you know what I mean like no you do what you can you know absolutely. Um, but yeah, like I, what you're saying about hunting, it's just such a time intensive and it's not like I didn't grow up in a family of, of hunters. Really. Yeah. So I, I didn't have like, 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 a, a you know, someone older to, to teach me the rope. So I, the, starting from scratch as a 48 year old man, it just seems kind of weird and daunting. You know Dude, what I mean? It, and it's like, it's, I'm going to go out there, fumble around like fucking. But you know something, man, it's, it's hard to learn any fucking skill at this fucking age. Yeah, new skill, true. You know what I mean? Like, I mean. And like, it, it's funny because like you seem to be like a, a jack of multiple trades, you know, as far as like laser tattoo removal and like bike stuff. And it's like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm like Josh has got his fingers in too many fucking pies, man. <laughs> just like fucking like, he knows too much, man. Like, it's like he's, one, one of these things has got to be like real half-assed to him. Like, like <laughs> well, the good thing is with the laser removal is it, it it's literally part-time. Yeah, and it's so few hours a week compared yeah. to the shop to the to to the bike shop. Yeah, so that it really doesn't. I still do a full day here, yeah. and then I go there at night. How long have you been building bikes for? We've been doing it since like two thousand one. Oh, all right. So you're like you're like a couple few years, a few years, couple away from years, twenty years almost, right? 
Yeah, well, 2001, what is it? 2009. Yeah, one, one year. What is it? 2000, 2020. 2020. I was going to ask him. It's what wicked is, easy was, math to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, in my mind, I was just going to be like, I was like, what is it, like 2018? Yeah, I know, like, I know. Fucking, uh, it, the time yeah. goes by so fast oh. now, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, we're we're one year away from a 20-year anniversary. Oh, all right, yeah, so uh, I mean- you're Now i got to start thinking about a big fucking party. Uh, hopefully, Corona's not still happening. <laughs> it, 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 the next one could be, you know, maybe Ebola will get yeah. a reunion, you know? We'll see what happens next summer. You know, like part of me, like man, is uh, is enjoying this, like n- you know, not like you know the the fi- the financial desperation that some people are going through, or like, yeah, you know, yeah. or like the loss of life. But I mean, I'm fortunately I'm still working a couple of days a week, and uh, like I drive truck and like I deliver food for a living, like track the trailer, and uh, man, my deliveries are easy. I don't have to talk to any of my fucking customers. There's no invoices to sign. Less, way less traffic on the road. Way less traffic. It's like it's like I can drive to Boston at fucking like eight o'clock. Takes me a half hour to get into the city. Yeah, it's no. fucking perfect, dude. Know? I, I had like, to go to Chelsea to meet up with my powder coater. Yeah, and I was like, usually it's like, you know, the time I go, I'm like, all right, it's going to be about an hour and a half, even yeah. though it's only forty miles or whatever. Yeah. And, and you know, but. Pfft, breezed right through boston like nothing it's fucking, and i was like fuck yeah it's dude fucking great. i was like i i <laughs> hope this social distancing thing it stays just, just comes it stays. because if, if i can work like a full 14 hour yeah. day and not talk to anybody yeah, but just man. crush like 10 hours yeah. of podcasts yeah dude that's a good day at fucking work for me man. Yeah, like yeah. i do not want to socialize with fucking normal people at <laughs> all like i don't even want to socialize with fucking people i have shit in common with half the time but yeah. like you know like, uh, as far as like a life of a truck driver, man, like <laughs> it's pretty fucking good, man. Right yeah, now, right now, yeah, yeah I, can I, imagine. I, I mean, my hours are suffering a little bit, but I mean, uh, dude, the roads are empty. There's yeah. nobody flipping me off and calling me a fucking asshole because I like I'm on the highway when yeah. they happen to be on the highway. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. Like, you know, like, and there's less distracted drivers out there because there's just less people on the road. It, it, yeah, it's, it's great. Like, and it's. Like truck drivers, like and like truck drivers across the board, but I mean mostly track the trailer truck drivers, you know. But I'm sure like anybody who's in the delivery service, whether you're like FedEx or like UPS or something like that, like I, you get shit on by the general public like fucking daily. I can like, imagine, yeah. And I mean, like maybe not so much you because you're your own businessman and stuff like that. But like for like the listeners out there in Radio Land, like you know, like. Being a truck driver is like the equivalent of like, say if you have like an office or something like that and like, you know, you're at your job, like you're either happy to be there or you're just like grinning and bearing it. You're trying to support your family and stuff like that. Like you're not in love with your fucking job, but like at least twice a day. Somebody comes up to your desk and goes, you're a fucking asshole. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you're like, you're like, what the fuck, man? Like, yeah. I, I'm just trying to like do my job. Like, yeah. like f- you know, that's the life of a tractor trailer driver. Like, yeah. you know, like you're backing into a fucking parking lot and instantly like people just try to like cut you off. Yeah. And then like you look at him, you're like, because it's a big race. Oh shit. I got to get around the truck yeah, before and, he's and like, doing his thing. You're, you're like, you're like, what, what the fuck are you doing? And they're like, fuck you, you asshole. Nice parking job. And it's like. I'm trying to fucking bring you fucking coffee and food, you cocksucker. It's like, yeah, yeah. fuck off, man. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, you definitely get P- PTSD, man, like, which is like that type of lifestyle. And uh, I don't know. Fuck sure. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. So, you know, be nice to the truck drivers out there. On that said, though, there's some fucking dickhead truck drivers. I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> fuck yeah, them. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, there's like, like, like anything, you know? Yeah, like anything. I mean, like, especially over the road guys. Like, yeah. those over the road guys, they're so fucking jaded. Like, I see, like, those dudes, like, clipping around, like, 90 miles an hour. Like, they don't have governors on their truck. Yeah. And they're just, like, riding somebody's ass. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, dude, you're giving us all a bad yeah, fucking yeah. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to my buddy Keith Cavello out there. Who knows, <laughs> who knows how his truck is going? Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, but, the funny thing about Keith Cavello, man, is that, you know, as rough and tumble as that dude is, like, like, on domestic shit, like, yeah. if you need, like, if he stays at your house, yeah, like, he's, like, he'll, like, cook you breakfast, like, he cleans the fucking oh, yeah. house, he's, like, the, like, 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 the, like, 
like it's just so weird you know what i mean because yeah. this big fucking gnarly skinhead dude's like oh dude yeah sorry man I, I cleaned up the living room for you and fucking here it is i made some sausages and, bri- and some eggs dude <laughs> okay. and you're like oh fuck yeah I, man I, like, like like there was a week that we all stayed at george radford's house yeah. back in the day yeah and like dude every day keith was like cleaning up and like like making oh, yeah. food for everybody and like fucking you know he's like he was so stoked you know what i mean yeah. to do that too keith's always been like a a, a good dude i hadn't seen him for or talked to him for actually like a good number of years. And then like, you know, like he ended up becoming like an over the road driver and stuff like that. And me being a driver also and stuff like that. Like, uh, like I've talked to him a few times online, but like I hung out with him briefly, talked to him for a little bit over at that bruiser show that hammer and the nails did, uh, last November. Yeah. Yeah. Caught up with him and like, Good fucking dude. Yeah, man. You know yeah. fucking. You know what? You, you know what he needed to do. He just needed to get out of New Bedford. Once he got out of New Bedford, like, like he that, calm, calm the fuck down. Yeah, like you know something like there's there's something about like not dying in like the town that you grew up in. You know, like even if you're moving like three towns over, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. probably beneficial. Like you sure. don't need to see see the same motherfuckers that you went to school with all the yeah. time. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, and in the time, like you know, certain areas like. There's a lot of dumb shit you can get into in New Bedford. <laughs> Not so much. Yeah. It's it's. It seems like it's a better city. It than is better than it, it used was, to be. Yeah, you know? absolutely, absolutely. But well, you know, I don't. You know, like especially when you go downtown, and I, I, all our friends have like businesses down there that are fucking doing good and booming and and and, and are cool. Like yeah, you know, like, I, I mean, I haven't been to downtown New Bedford in in quite some time. Yeah, but like, yeah, you know, it's like. Nice little sandwich boutique shops yeah. down there. There's, well, like there's Craig, a, Craig's got the burrito shop. The yeah. JV still got the skateboard shop. Like Roger got the record store. Like it's it's like it, a cool yeah. little. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Jeff has the the barber shop. Like it's like and uh, and you know something that kind of goes back to what you were saying as far as like you know it's it's not necessarily a bad thing that like progress gets cleaned up and yeah. like, you don't have to worry about like you know yeah I'm, I'm sure in New Bedford you still have to worry about like falling on like a dirty needle or something. Yeah, sure, like that. sure. But, like, yeah. While you're dodging those dirty needles, yeah. you can go to no problemo and get like a nice nice yeah, burrito yeah, probably. Absolutely. You know? But you know, like when we used to go there when we were kids and skate, like inevitably there was some fucking kind of drama that was gonna happen. I can imagine. Doesn't not so much anymore. I mean, I'm sure there is, but you know, you know, also I don't know the life of a sixteen year old anymore, like what what the fuck is going on, but Do sixteen year olds skate anymore, you think? Uh, probably. I don't know. We should I got I gotta get J J V on the show and ask him about the, what the his young clientele crew. is. Yeah. But I'm sure there's you know, there's always a, a young younger generation. The only doing person something. the only person that I really know that skates a lot now is just Shane. And I mean skate Shane's like what, like seventy now? Or yeah, yeah. Seventy years old, the old man still <laughs> Still, still skateboarding. Well, w- when I was, uh, he was two years behind me in in, in high school, so yeah. you can you can kind of do the math from that. <laughs> um, but the uh, the uh, 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 yeah, man, and, and, and yeah, he still goes out with some of the, some of the old Rhode Island guys and yeah. skateboarding. But yeah, it's it's fucking crazy, man. You know, and, and it just goes to show, like, um, something we've talked about on this a few times. Like, there's dudes that are involved in this shit that are lifers, dude, and and it's weird because like historically like you know when we were young all this shit was young like skateboarding was young punk rock was young so there wasn't a big historical perspective to it like its history was like four five six seven eight nine ten years old for the most i mean i know skateboarding really goes to the 60s or whatever but i I mean the the incarnation of skateboarding that we were brought into and uh and then you know or like you know it's and then it's just people grew with it now now there's a 30 40 50 year history to some things and you know you know we're, we're still involved in it it's like some of us yeah. you know whatever I, for, I, for whatever it's worth there's some, some lifers involved in shit out there and i think yeah. it's cool you know either that or it's just you know peter pan syndrome we never grew up <laughs> who, who gives a fuck though, well you know? I, no i mean like you know you can you can throw that argument that like you guys never like grew up and stuff like that but i mean like you guys are all pretty fucking grown up. I mean, half of you guys are all fucking businessmen, you know, yeah, which, which yeah. is pretty fucking brave. You but know it's, I mean? but it's all funny business, dude. Like I'm, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm motorcycles I'm, and tattoos. Like I'm not, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, like you guys, you guys are turning a trade here. I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of fuckery going on. Like, you know, while you're building bikes. Oh yeah. I mean, this is there's always you know, stupidity. That's the boys club. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. But, uh, but I mean, you know, like you, you got this, like Shane's got his like screen printing yeah. business and stuff yeah. like that. Like, I mean, it takes balls to like be a businessman. You know what I mean? Like you're working for yourself. You're basically a slave to your, your own fucking business. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know? Everyone thinks it's like, Oh man, but nah. see, see, I would, I would it's, never, an, it's, I, an, it's not as glorious, but you do it just cause, see, cause I that's would, what you want to do. I would never want that pressure. Like I go to work, 
the truck's fucking loaded. I work, I might work a 12 hour day, might work a 14 hour day. But when that truck's fucking unloaded, I bring it back and I go, don't fucking call me until tomorrow morning. Yeah. I know what my start time is. Fucking, yeah. I'll see do you it. tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. I don't need to fucking read any fucking work emails. Yeah. Like there's no bosses fucking calling me. Yeah. Like, you know, like it's real fucking cut and dry. Like, yeah. and like, there's something to be said about that. Like I might be like a wage slave and be working for somebody else, but you know something at the end of the day, I don't have fucking Joe Schmo fucking being like, hey, my fucking, my gas tank's fucking leaking. Like, can you squeeze me in? Fucking, yeah, yeah, like, no, you know, no, weld no. this shit, you know, and you're like, yeah, yeah I got to squeeze this guy. In. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, I'm sure I you it. appreciate the business, but it's like, you know, like. No, I have, no, like yours is cut and dry. Business-wise, I have way less fucking worries and probably small business owners like you do. I mean, yeah. but you guys live like pirates, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, yeah, like, it's like the week to week, you know what I yeah, mean? Half the time, know, and it's like, like, all right. Shuffle this around, and so I can pay this, and shuffle this around. So yeah, I can like pay I, that like I, I pretty much know what I'm gonna make, like week in and week out before, you know. Yeah, yeah, corona, no, no, yeah, for the Corona hit. But you know, like potentially, the reason why I do it right is like at the at some point there could be big rewards, right? And then then you reap the benefits of it. Probably not, you know what I mean? It's I'm not like if I was if I was if I was gonna be a smart businessman, yeah. I would be into something that was like way more general that like would appre that would be appreciated by more people. Like I think Craig's really smart, like burritos, like way more people like burritos than like <laughs> fucking choppers, dude. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's smart. You know what yeah. I mean? It appeals to a more general population and that's the, that's where you can make some money, you know what I mean? But I don't have the passion for burritos that I do for, for custom motorcycles. Oh, what can I say? But man? if you could combine them. Though, oh, man. man. Fucking a, a burrito and motorcycle parts store. Like, come here. Well, yeah, well, you know, like, have a burrito. You know, isn't, there, isn't there a thing about like pop-up stores? Like kind of like pop-up, you know, like, like you know, why don't you get them to, you know. <laughs> have, have a little, <laughs> little pop-up store and a, no problema. Uh, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> you know, get yourself like a fucking, I don't know, a griddle. You can be making quesadillas <laughs> or something like that. Like. Come in, get your fucking oil changed or we'll, whatever you're doing. And we'll and fry up a, a, a quesadilla we'll, for you. We'll quesadilla. I'll do it like old school, like, like real Mexican style where like, like you just have like, like one like hot, like griddle thing. And I'll like have the corn mash and I'll like yeah. make the tortilla like while I'm, while I'm frying up the meat and, and all that shit and fucking taco trucks, man. Fucking like, press it down. Yeah. You know, like, uh. The whole food truck thing, man, is pretty. Amazing. Is that still going though? That's got to be going. It's got to be. I think it's it's. I think it's bigger in like different parts of the country where like weather is more permitting. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, like we know a couple guys that do it, and and, and you got to do it smart, like where you got to commit to it, and you know, like have a route, like where you go, like where people that work like like rely on you for lunch, like factories and shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like where they come out and it's like, all right, you're the option. You know what I mean? Or like, and you probably have to specialize in like maybe like two items, yeah, two, three yeah. items and be like really rock solid yeah. on those fucking items. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, you can't be like the, the general. You can't be like the all night diner. You go, you want some eggs? You want some fucking <laughs> yeah. a steak -um sandwich? You want like, some, uh, some pancakes? Yeah, some roast beef. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, like man, uh, yeah, yeah. you got to do one or two things. You got to keep it simple. Yeah. And that's what most of them are anyway. It's like a burger place or a barbecue place or yeah. a fucking tacos or whatever. I don't know, man. You could yeah. <laughs> I don't know. get a setup, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe if the you know ten years from now, if yeah, you, uh, you get tired of a food truck removal. baron, yeah, man. Or maybe I just do that on a truck and I just drive around. Do the tattoo removal on a truck, man. There's there's a lot of sh people with shitty tattoos, yeah, I man. Know. Like I know, dude. I'm always I'm always like thinking about like hitting you up and being like, what what what. What, what type of deals could you give me just to like uh, laser we, off we, everything? Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk after. We'll talk yeah. after. Yeah. But yeah, man, I think uh, fucking, uh, I definitely appreciate you coming out, man. Is there anything that we haven't hit on? I mean, we, I know we went all over the place and it's pretty cool. Like I, I, I think it was a fun, it was a fun talk. Was there anything we didn't talk about that you think's important? Uh, I mean, I came here with no agenda whatsoever. Just, uh, that's the best way, dude. I never have an agenda. We just know, fucking roll. I'm, I'm sure people fucking shut this off at fucking the 30 minute mark. What are we, like, <laughs> what four hours in? <laughs> two hours and 20 minutes in. They're like, what the fuck are these is, guys is talking about? Is this how long about? this is? Yeah. We're at 220, dude. Jeez. Uh, you better get, you better get learning on that editing. There's a lot of fucking bullshit <laughs> on this. A lot of bullshit. But I definitely want to thank you for coming out. Um, what's uh, Do you have any uh, social media for your bands or anything that you want to plug? Uh, Hammer in the Nails has an Instagram. If you want to go to that, that's fine. Uh, we got no shows. I mean, we might have a show in Spain coming up in August, uh, the uh, Beach Bear Chaos Fest. Uh probably not happening <laughs> i'm guessing i don't i don't know just all like, depends man it all depends work. like the future is officially canceled for yeah everything. yeah uh 
So yeah, you can fucking go there. Like there might be a new record with this uh this other oi band from uh we're doing a split uh once we get our shit recorded uh with this uh Catalonian band uh called Ixil. Cool. Uh really good, they're worth checking out. Uh but uh yeah, I guess that's it, man. Nothing to really advertise. Uh and uh that's it, that's it, man. All, All right, right, man. Fuck yeah, man. Well, again, I want to thank you. We'll, yeah, we'll definitely have to me. do this again, and we'll get more hammered and talk more dumb shit. There's a lot of dumb shit to be talked. Absolutely. Later. All right. So before I wrap up, I just got to do a couple of, uh, uh, give a couple of shout outs here and uh, talk about a couple of uh, places that help uh, support the podcast. And first off, I want to thank Chop Cult for, for, uh, for helping uh promote us and uh if you don't know chop cult they're the biggest and best news resource and social network dedicated to uh chopper builders and, and uh motorcycle riders check them out at chopcult.com they got a bunch of shit going on over there man um there's a uh there's a forum and uh they got blog dumps they got classifieds where you can buy sell trade barter uh for for motorcycle parts and and whatever and uh and uh it's free, so you don't got to pay anything to go there. So it's uh, it's all cool. You just go to chopcult.com. If you're not already a member, just hit sign me up, and it's free. They don't ask any credit card information or any of that. Um, you can also follow them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, all the social medias, simply at chopcult. Uh, also, um, my uh, friends in California have a clothing company called Amerta. And if you don't know what Amirtha stands for, it means code of silence. It means don't be a fucking rat. You might have seen their shirts. Stop glorifying rats. Uh, amongst other things, uh, the old-fashioned gentleman shirt. Um, all kinds of good clothing over there. So check them out at amirthamia.com, which is O-M-E-R-T-A-M-I-A.com. Also uh, on Instagram at amirthamia.com. And... They uh, offered a promo code. So if you uh, use the promo code Big Truth at AmirthaMia.com, you will get a heavy discount. I believe it is uh, 20% off your whole order. So use the, you, you know, go check out when it says ask for a promo code, type in Big Truth, all one word, you get 20% off your order. So you can't lose there. And I know uh, money's tight for some people right now where we're not working. So check them out. They got all kinds of stuff. I, I can't even begin to go into it all. Jackets, fucking socks, shirts, fucking all kinds of stuff, man. And it's it's rad stuff. And and a lot of the shirts they use are American made and uh, really high quality stuff. So check them out. AmirthaMia.com uh, and uh, Instagram at AmirthaMia. Um, and then also ChopAhead.com, um, which is uh, the website for my motorcycle shop. Uh, we do uh, full custom builds. We do uh, full service and repair. So whether, like you hear me say it all the time, whether you need an oil change or you need a full custom chopper built, we'll do it for you. Uh, you can check us out at www.chopahead.com. Uh, and uh, at Instagram, it's just a hash, uh, at uh, chopahead. Um, we got a bunch of swag parts if there's a part you need that you don't see on the site i can still get it for you so just uh shoot us a message or, or give us a call and uh, we'll get that out to you um and if uh, i definitely need to just announce that we finally have the uh, big truth podcast website up so you can go there and check it out um it's just big truth podcast.com wicked simple uh there you know this is a completely diy kind of set up. And if you don't know what that means, it means do it yourself. Um, I am not receiving money for, for any of this. Uh, I just kind of funded it all myself. I paid for all the equipment, pay for all the, uh, the hosting and, and all of that. So if you want to help out, there's a place on there that uh, says support. Um, and you can go and give a donation if you want. And if you give a good donation, I'll, I'll send you some cool shit. And either way, we'll give you a shout out on the show. Um, but yeah, just check out the website, bigtruthpodcast.com. Uh, if you like what you heard today, uh, definitely go check out uh, the other episodes. And if you don't subscribe, hit subscribe and uh, leave us some feedback. Let us know what you're thinking. And if you have any issues or want to reach out direct for in, with any ideas or input, uh, you can uh, hit bigtruthpodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.